I'm going to introduce all my colleagues uh, working together, young colleagues, uh, senior colleagues, uh, and uh, we really hope uh, to be able to know each other, even if uh, we are on the web. So we chose uh, to use a Zoom webinar because uh, we want to try to be at least a little bit interactive. But if you can find some problems uh, with the Zoom webinar, you can also use uh, uh, YouTube. And on the chat or uh, with the WhatsApp chat, uh, you will receive uh, the link for YouTube. So it's uh, time to start and uh, I'm going to show you a short introduction. Okay, let me see. Okay, with the mouse, I wanted to close this one. Sorry, this is the, the typical problems. And here we are. So I want to tell you first what is uh, the origin of this experience. It was about uh, one month ago, and uh, one colleague, one pediatrician, the name is uh, Danilo Consenso. You will uh, you will know him uh, very soon. He is very passionate and very experienced in a lung ultrasound. So he decided to cooperate with us, we are gynecologists, to scan lung ultrasound, to explore the possibility to use a lung ultrasound in pregnant women. Thinking about uh, the large number of gynecologists and uh, obstetrics around the world already skilled on lung ultrasound, on, sorry, on ultrasound, and considering the possibility to use a lung ultrasound for uh, the detection of uh, COVID pneumonia, it became clear that uh, we could really explore this possibility. That's why we, um, first uh, we under, understood uh, that there are so many elements uh, supporting uh, this adventure, adventure because uh, it's quite uh, an easy examination it's not very costly. Also, the key point is that you can do the examination on the bed patients without the need to move the patient to other departments, for instance, to radiology. Then we can't forget that the ease of this infection and the possibility to repeat several times during the days, during the hospitalization. But the key point is that there could be the possibility to be performed both obstetric and thorac examination by one single profession, thus avoiding a possible um, contamination to try to reduce at least the risk. So lung ultrasound examination can be performed with both a convex or linear probe. But for the technical aspects, we will ask the two very, very experienced colleagues Dr. Inkingolo and Dr. Smarjassi, they will uh, describe us all the details. Uh, just uh, to mention that uh, we had the possibility also to use uh, some wireless uh, devices uh, that in this uh, scenario can be particularly useful because again, uh, we can avoid this, the contamination. Then we will learn how to do the examination we usually scan 14 areas and we make recordings of 10 video clips. They will uh, um, teach us how to scan longitudinally or transversely, but better we have to say intercostally. And they will provide us some, uh, not so sophisticated, but some key elements, uh, technical elements that are very, very important to keep in mind. So our experience, uh, we started with a, a 23 weeks uh, pregnant woman. She was admitted because of clinical signs of pneumonia, but at admission, she was breathing spontaneously. At ultrasound examination, a thickened pleural line was observed. 
then some areas of white lung. We will learn what white lung means and some diffuse hyperechoic vertical artifacts. And the swab provided the, the documented the, the diagnosis of COVID-19 pneumonia. So during the hospitalization, we could uh, assess uh, this lady longitudinally and uh, we observed the modifications uh, during time. At the beginning, there was a, a quite evident subpleural, this one, this area, subpleural consolidations. Then during the clinical improvement, uh, there was a reduction of the consolidation and later only vertical artifacts. So we collected, we examined other patients and just to give you my, our experience, very, very, uh, only some images. This lady, 17 weeks gestation. At the beginning, she was asymptomatic, a white, white area. Then with the clinical improvement, only vertical artifacts were evident. And then with improvement again, a further improvement, only isolated vertical artifacts. What about this lady? At the beginning, several vertical artifacts, then with improvement, little by little, only isolated. Let's look at this one. At admission, a thick white vertical area, then she experienced a transitory worsening and a white uh, lung was observed. Then with the clinical improvement, a normalization of the lung pattern. So in summary, we experienced that we could avoid CT scan in these patients. Of course, we can obtain a reduction of chest X-ray we know that ultrasound is radiation free, but again, I want to repeat, in my experience, I was really impressed because I realized that we could take advantage of two key points. One, so many doctors in the emergency could be able to learn quickly how to perform an ultrasound and to use it, especially in pregnant women. And one single professional could do both examination. That's why, and I'm going to conclude, we developed a sort of lung ultrasound task force. At the beginning, we decided to prepare a tutorial video. You can find it in the literature for minutes a tutorial video. But during the afternoon, we can look at that again together. We decided to publish in the American Journal our first experience just to share with the colleagues around the world what we observed. Then we developed a teaching program. We tested first the teaching program on a small number of gynecologists, 10, and the results were very good indeed. So we wanted to test on a large number of gynecologists in Italy, 108 gynecologists and obstetricians already skilled on ultrasound, and the results were very good. That's why we decided we have to share this experience with all colleagues around the world. Finally, I want to mention the artificial intelligence analysis uh, together with uh, Libertario Demi in Trento. This is a city in the north of Italy, is a physics uh, and together with a group of engineers, uh, they are collecting cases uh, to develop artificial intelligence analysis. Okay, this is our experience so far. Recently, somebody mentioned Africa. So we wanted to go beyond the sea. We wanted to, I mean, to reach you and we want to spend with you this afternoon to know better your reality and be able to share your experience, our experience, and to understand together if we can do more and more. So take home messages, we can summarize them at the end of the afternoon before uh, going on with our experts. I want, let's go to this one. First, uh, Alessia, I want uh, uh, to ask uh, our, um, yes, a key person, 
we can show all the, the map of yes. the nations. So it's uh, quite encouraging. And uh, I can say that I was really surprised that so many colleagues from Africa replied to our invitation to join this afternoon. And uh, it's very, very difficult to mention all of them. I think that uh, they are 12, am I right? 12, 12 nations in Africa and Italy. As you can see, we are here in Rome, but we have uh, two uh, persons, two people in uh, Milan and Brescia that, uh, that decided to join us. One is uh, uh, Sister Gemma. Hi, Sister Gemma. Thank you for uh, helping us in uh, spreading the invitation for this uh, workshop. Some technical advices. As you know, behind uh, the machines, there are so many young doctors, not so many because of a distance that we need to have uh, still in Italy, but uh, each of them, they are in charge to be in contact with the colleagues of one nation by using WhatsApp. So we have so different ways to communicate. You can write on WhatsApp with your person in Rome. You can write in the Zoom chat. And we, we wanted to collect questions. And after one presentation, we can take 10 minutes, 15 minutes to reply all the answers. Then what else? Sorry? Yeah. Oh, yes, of course. It's very, very important for me to... Um, to thank the because of the possibility to uh, obtain to finalize the organization of uh, this workshop is uh, because Antonella and Laura in Milan they helped us the frame this is a okay I wanted to show okay I am part of the Cesi the Italian name is uh, Cesi it means uh, a, a center for international cooperation. This is a uh, one, one, two, three doctors. Uh, they went uh, to spend some time all around the world. But here you can see Antonella, Laura, and uh, our director, Marco uh, Caselli. And then before starting, I wanted to introduce uh, the task force. Uh, the task force. I would like to invite, uh, where is uh, Francesca, Andrea, yes, uh, Danilo, and uh, Ricardo. I, I prepared uh, some photo, actually. I don't know where are they. OK, but uh, sorry. Task force. I can't find it. Uh, this is the task force. OK, I found it. OK, this one all our images, but uh, so Francesca Mauro, she's also a gynecologist uh, like me, then uh, is it possible to have, okay, we are all together, so we can make a photo before starting, <laughs> and we, we wanted to say hello to all hello. of you. So Dr. Andrea Smargiassi, pneumologist, uh, Riccardo Inchingolo, pneumologist, and uh, Danilo Ponsenso, pediatrician. And uh, on the other side, helping you, Cristina, Giulia, Chiara, so many, but you, we, you can be in contact with them. And uh, let me see, okay. I want also to thank uh, Professor Lanzone, Professor Scambia, Professor, uh, your professor, Professor Soldati, and also Professor Giorgino, okay, from Trento. Now, it's time to start. And uh, the summary, the timetable. Now it's uh, uh, 20 past two. So we can show the, the agenda we wanted to follow with you this afternoon. Where is it? The Diary. agenda? Diary. Yes. Okay. We planned a sort of agenda. It was important, but we are able, of course, to modify according to your interest. So after my presentation, the two pneumologists, they will start by showing you 10 cases. We wanted to invite you 
they will uh, present one video with a lung ultrasound examination. And uh, if you want, you will receive uh, by a Zoom, am I right? By a Zoom, Sabrina? Yes. They will receive a sort of a sheet form. You will be invited to ask, uh, do you choose uh, number one pro from one to six? Uh, six possibilities. Sorry? Okay, so, so they first uh, they will look at the video and yeah. then they will receive the tool uh, to be able to reply. You are not, uh, of course, you are not perhaps experienced on lung ultrasound as I was, of course. But if you want, this is sort of pre-test, then we will attend the lessons and at the end, we will repeat the test just to be able to understand if uh, together we learned something more, right? So please, Andrea. The test. Yes. The test. This one? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Antonia, for this introduction. So this is a, a kind of pre-test, a preliminary test. So you have not to be worried about your, uh, your answer. Uh, we will present uh, here uh, four videos, four ultrasonographic videos, and you have the possibility to choose one of these six answers, possible answers. So you can choose the, the one you prefer or the one that is more probable for you. Okay, this is the first case. So we can start the video, okay. So you can choose between these six answers, normal, the first one, two, vertical artifacts with the slight pleural irregularities or pleural line broken and dented with small subpleural consolidation, three, white lung without subpleural consolidation, four, white lung with subpleural consolidation, five, large pulmonary consolidation, Six, pleural effusion. So vote now. If you want. Uh, you have the possibility to look. Do you have the possibility to look the, the to watch the, the video? Is there some problems? No. Okay. No? Okay, so no, no answer. No answers. No. Answer. no. Okay, so uh, Andrea, would you, uh, shall we go on? Okay. By looking at the Okay. So perhaps it's not the stop here for them to, to be able to recognize that. Because we are very sorry, but we know that uh, I don't think by uh, Zoom, the quality is a bit lower. Okay. Would you like to tell us about it or uh, would you like to make uh, any comments? Ah, okay. We can, this test uh, was to, uh, to assess the, uh, the basic knowledge, okay? Uh, and uh, the, uh, our aim was to, uh, to perform this test at the end. Uh, the same test at the end of this event in order to, uh, to test and to check 
the uh, possibility to have uh, uh, some skills uh, uh, acquired. Okay. So, okay, somebody replied on the chat by saying number one or number two, another one. Okay. But uh, some, uh, Dr. Dalia, right, uh, he said that the system is not allowing to submit uh, the answer. So, ah, okay. by checking the system, I suggest uh, to go through the same. Video okay. okay. So, yeah, we have to answer to all the same questions. And after, we can submit. Ah, okay. 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 My suggestion is that you can take a piece of paper. Yeah. And we are going to show you 10 videos. And the questions are from 1 to 6. So, on the piece of paper, write, please, from 1 to 10 and try to make your choice. You can take a picture and by WhatsApp, you can send to your, uh, or how can we call you? Moderator, okay? Okay. <laughs> you can send the photo at the end of the test video. So please, Andrea. Okay, let's move to the second video. This is our second video. The answers are, uh, the same, so you have to choose between them. We can say that, uh, uh, shall, shall we wait 10 seconds? Okay. So that you can look at that, so normal or... Okay, we can I repeat the answers. Uh, normal, vertical artifact with slight pleural irregularities uh, or pleural line broken or intended. White lung without uh, subpleural consolidation. White lung with subpleural consolidation. Large pulmonary consolidation or pleural effusion. So make your choice. Let's move on to the third one. Third video. What about this video? Is it normal? Vertical artifacts with slight pleural irregularities. White lung without pleural consolidation. White lung with the subpleural consolidation, large pulmonary consolidation, or pleural effusion. What is your best choice? So the same test will be performed at the end of this event. And we will have the possibility to answer to the same questions, to the same, to, to rewatch the same videos and to answer at the end of this program. Okay. Let's move to the fourth. Again, you can choose between a normal condition, vertical artifacts with slight pleural irregularities, or, or small subpleural consolidation, white lung without subpleural consolidation, white lung with subpleural consolidation, large pulmonary consolidation or pleural effusion. This fair, this uh, inter interactivity, this interactive video. Check. Okay, I'm there. Let's move. Yeah. 
fifth video. In this case, okay, it works, okay. Again, you have to choose between these six answers, the more probable for you, normal. You have to run the video again. Ah, okay, okay. That it works. Because it's possible, it's, uh, it's important to, to see the yeah, yeah. instead of the still image. Yeah, I agree. Normal condition, vertical artifact with uh, slight pleural irregularities uh, or uh, line, the pleural line broken and intended with uh, more subpleural consolidation, white lung without subpleural consolidation, white lung with subpleural consolidation, large pulmonary consolidation, pleural effusion. Okay. I believe that we can move to the next one. Okay, yes. Six. Number six. Six video. Okay, works. Again, okay. normal condition. Vertical artifacts with the slight pleural irregularities or a pleural line broken, indented with the small subpleural consolidation. White lung without subpleural consolidation. White lung with subpleural consolidation. Large pulmonary consolidation, pleural effusion. Okay, if you have made your choice, I'm going to show the number seven. Okay. Yeah, it works. Normal, vertical artifact with slight pleural irregularities or pleural and broken and dented. White lung without subpleural consolidation, white lung with subpleural consolidation, large pulmonary consolidation, pleural effusion. It is very important for us to check your basic knowledge. Okay, can we move to the left? Yes, to the last one. No, the eight. Oh, sorry, to the <laughs> next one. No, sorry, this is number eight. eight. Okay. Andrea, uh, somebody are saying that it's not so easy to listen to your voice. Ah, okay. Can you hear better my voice? Can you answer to your moderator or on the chat? It's better if you can. Can you hear me now well? Can you say yes or no? On the Zoom. Loud and clear, fantastic. Oh, okay. <laughs> and what about uh, Dr. What, Jassi? what Dr. about me? Can you hear? Both of you. Both ah, okay. Very fine, both of you. Fantastic. Okay. 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 Now number number eight. eight. So the same game. You can make your choice. Normal pattern. Vertical artifact with slight pleural irregularities or pleural line broken and dented. White lung without subpleural consolidations. White lung with subpleural consolidations. Large pulmonary consolidation. 
pleural effusion. Doctor Hassan is asking, yes. how can I choose? Uh, perhaps, uh, do you mention how can I choose if I don't have any element yeah. to make the decision? Or your question could be, how can I choose? So, in the first case, you we will be waiting to learn yeah. your lessons. Yeah. In the second case, you don't have... A, somewhere you have to simply write on a piece of paper your choice yes for the 10 videos at the end if you want if you want it's not an examination it's just no. a test for job mm -hmm. you can make a photo and to send it and it's anonymous anonymous no oh, because if they send it by WhatsApp oh, it's difficult oh, but simply if you want yeah, oh, it, it is a kind of joke. Okay, this is the number. This is the number eight. Eight. And now, now, now the number nine. Okay. The video. The video. Okay. Again, you have to choose between these, these six answers. Normal. Vertical artifacts with uh, slight pleural irregularities uh, or pleural unbroken indented. White lung without subpleural consolidation. White lung with subpleural consolidations. Large pulmonary consolidation. Pleural effusion. What are the more probable for you? Okay. It is a joke. At the end of this uh, event, we will perform the same test. Last one? Last one. The last one. So, make your choice. Normal. Vertical artifact with slight pleural irregularities, white lung without subpleural consolidation, white lung with subpleural consolidation, large pulmonary consolidation, pleural effusion. Okay. So, Andrea, thank you so much for the submission of these clips. Why you are thank you for your votes. The slides uh, for your lesson. I would like, now I have the list of the nations. Sabrina, I'm going to be far from you. And because they asked uh, if, he, if you can see the mouth, I can understand because uh, the accent can be a little bit difficult for us. So the nations, I would invite you, your, our colleagues in Africa, to give us a feedback on the Zoom chat. I'm going to mention the nations, and if you can say, here we are, or okay, so we can yeah. check the reaction from different parts of Africa. I'm going to start. First one, Cameroon. Cameroon, are you there? Who is the moderator? Cameroon, Valeria. Okay, they are, they are still trying to connect. Ethiopia. Ethiopia, yes. Okay, done. Tanzania. Tanzania, are there? Are they? Julia is the moderator. Okay, excellent. Ah, they are raising the hands, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> now, Rwanda. Rwanda, good. Sierra Leone. Some problems in connection. Some problems for connection, but they are trying to connect. Okay, but don't worry, we will repeat some key points. 
and then according to the agenda. And uh, yes, after the lesson, there will be some practical aspect, then there will be a break, and after the break, again another lesson. So we will have time to repeat because we know that some of you they can attend one hour and then they have to go back to go away, but some others are trying to forget. Okay, Sierra Leone. Then Somalia. Are you there? Somalia, Somaliland? Sorry, we pronounce it in Italian. Somali, Somaliland? Okay, yes, yeah, fantastic. Djibouti, is it correct the pronunciation? Djibouti, uh, you will tell us. Djibouti, fine. Kenya, Kenya. Okay, great, thank you. Burundi, Burundi, okay, fine. Burkina Faso, Burkina Faso, Paula, fine, fantastic. And then Italy, Italy, so Gemma, are you there? Okay, now, 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 then it's finished, we have Okay, also the pronunciation is correct, Djibouti. I have so. So now, Francesco, we we can move on, and uh, it's your time, Ricardo. Okay. We are going to listen to you for about twenty minutes, something. So the time is yours. Please give us the basic principles we need to use other sounds. Thank you. Thanks, Antonia, for the introduction. We are very happy to participate in this project with uh, colleagues from Africa. Um, now we uh, divide this uh, section in three parts. The first is uh, dedicated to the setting of the uh, machine. Then we describe all principles that we need to know in order to perform chest lung examination. And then we explore the different kinds of uh, um, lung ultrasonography findings that we can obtain, especially in case of COVID-19 uh, pneumonia. We believe that lung ultrasound can be a part of medical examination in which we can combine the information derived from palpation, auscultation, inspection and percussion with the information that we can get from ultrasonographic point of view. So doing, we can consider lung ultrasound really the fifth pillar of the medical examination. Now we start with the probe, essentially in order to get lung ultrasonographic information. Uh, usually we can use two kinds of probe, convex and linear one. As concern convex probe, we of course use this kind of probe in order to combine the low frequency range, usually between 3.5 to 5 megahertz, with the possibility to reach deepest part of the world. As concerned the use of a linear probe, one of the main advantages of this probe is the possibility to use higher frequencies of this probe, usually 5 to 13 megahertz, in order to highlight small details of the condition. Now we need to mention some technical aspect very very crucial in order to amplify the information that we can obtain from lung ultrasonographic evaluation we can distinguish two set of information the first concerns the output acoustic settings in which we can identify essentially five um Five, five settings. The first is, of course, the probe that we use before we describe the, both convex and linear wire. The second setting that we can modify in order to 
obtain better resolution is the depth. In order to set visual field, so doing we can influence the temporal resolution of the images that we can obtain from the machine. Other important output acoustic settings is the frequency. Of course, it is related to the probe that we use. Low frequencies, we have better penetration, of course, of the tissue, of the particular of the lung, but we have, in this case, a worse resolution of the images. Instead, if we use a linear probe, or in general, if we use a higher frequency, of course, we have a worse penetration of the tissue, but we can improve the resolution of the images that we can obtain from the evaluation. The other two crucial acoustic um, setting uh, that we can uh, um, change in, uh, in input uh, are the power and the focal point. The first, of course, is related to the thermal index and to the mechanical index. And the last is the focal point. It's crucial to select the, the point of our observation in order to obtain the better resolution for that specific frequency. As concerns the other acoustic setting, we can modify essentially three parameters. The first is the gain. In order, we can modify the gain in order to adjust the tissue attenuation that, of course, we have um, for the ultrasound being penetrated through lung tissue. We can modify this gain selectively with time gain compensation in order to adjust the gain in relation to the depth. Finally, um, we can modify better if uh, we eliminate cosmetic filters and harmonic imaging in order to ameliorate the quality of the images. In order to perform a systematic uh, lung ultrasonography uh, examination and uh, in order to be able also to communicate with the other colleague, uh, we uh, recently have proposed a, um, an approach, a systematic approach based on lung ultrasonographic evaluation with which we can identify 14 landmarks based on the identification of usually used vertical and horizontal lines of the thorax that we can see summarized in this slide. If the patient can assume sitting position, we can start with the systematic evaluation of the patient, starting from the basal zone. This is, of course, a proposal. We can start from the right part of the uh, posterior zone of the thorax, starting and indicated with the number one in this cartoon, and then move up to the second and third point using paravertebral line as uh, um, landmarks. Then we can pass to the other part of the posterior the, uh, zone of the thorax, always from basal to upper region, and uh, focus our attention on the other three zones on the, on the thorax, indicated with the number four, five, and six. Then we can explore the lateral part of the thorax using mid axillary lines as landmarks and so doing we can identify other four points of evaluation indicated by the number seven and eight on the right side and the nine and ten on the left finally we can conclude our basal examination of this of our patient exploring the ventral anterior part of the thorax, always using an approach that starts from the basal zone and moving up. In this case, we use mid-clavicular lines as um, linear vertical lines uh, of the thorax. Of course, if we start from the basal, we can identify the zone 11 and then 12, and then pass to the other side for the other two uh, zones. Of course, the 13th zone can uh, correspond to the heart zone. So doing, we can sometimes do not obtain information on this uh, 
on this zone. As before uh, mentioned by Antonia Testia, it's crucial to optimize the information that we can obtain from ultrasonographic uh, point of view. In order to get um, measure information, it's crucial to apply the probe on the thorax with transversal or horizontal or similar scan, not the longitudinal scan, because so doing, we have, of course, the shadowing due to the coastal part. Some um, aspect related to the acquisition protocol. We can use both convex and linear with the advantages previously mentioned. Uh, we believe that it's better to use a single focal point modality, not uh, multifocusing. It's crucial to set the focal point on the pleural line. Now we describe in detail what is. And keep the mechanical index very low in order to amplify the characterization of the pleural line. It's crucial to avoid as possible saturation phenomena through the reduction of the gain through the uh, mm, the elimination of harmonic imaging contrast doppler and other cosmetic filters uh, other important aspect is the uh, in order to achieve the highest frame rate uh, possible in order to obtain it it's crucial not to use multi focusing Finally, we can, of course, save the data that we acquired in uh, different format. DICOM is one of these. And uh, uh, transfer this uh, information on a dedicated uh, platform. So now I pass to my friend and colleague, Andreas Margiassi, for a technical and practical part. OK. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ricardo. Uh, now we can uh, um, perform a, a, practical, a practical demonstration. I would like to briefly thank uh, Dario for his help. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we, are, we are going to, uh, to quiz together our, uh, our land setting for uh, ultrasonographic machine. So this is a, a convex probe. Okay, the convex probe is suitable for uh, abdominal examination. And uh, is it okay? So the convex probe. Is it, it is suitable for a. Ah, okay. We are... Okay, you can start by explaining the probe. So, uh, convex probe, the convex probe, uh, okay. okay, the convex probe, which is seat suitable for, uh, for abdominal examination, is the first step to uh, examine our patient uh, on lungs. So, if we use this uh, uh, probe on our patient, and uh, uh, now I ask, uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, shift uh, on the echographic, uh, okay. The, so you have a bad uh, image uh, of the lungs uh, because you have to uh, set correctly the output and the input setting to uh, have a good, a good image. So first step, you have to, uh, to choose the correct frequency and the correct depth. So the depth is not correct in this evaluation because you are, okay, you are assessing this hyperechoic line, which is called the pleural line, okay, which is the pleural line and uh, uh, you are uh, assessing this pleural line with uh, a visual field over 20 centimeters in depth. It is not correct. You have to modify the depth by, 
Okay, zooming the image. This is a better image. So next step, you have to uh, modify the focal point. So the focal point is uh, indicated by this triangle. The focal point is the point in the image that has the maximal spatial resolution. So you need to put the focal point, okay, on the pleural line. This is the focal point, the modified focal point. So another step is to modify for uh, output settings, the power of observation. So your power of ultrasounds is indicated and influences the mechanical index, which is indicated here, okay? Mechanical index 1.1. .1. So Ricardo said before that uh, you have to put low mechanical indexes. So we can reduce mechanical index, modifying, okay, modifying the power. Zero point seven is the correct mechanical index. Now, another step is to modify the frequency of observation. The frequency of the observation is uh, reported here. Okay. The median frequency is reported here, about uh, four, five megahertz between one, the lowest, and eight, the highest for this probe. So you can modify this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, frequency in order to have a better resolution, you can Okay, you can uh, put the highest resolution you can in order to have the higher resolution, but the lowest penetration, but you don't need to have a high penetration power because you are assessing the pleural line at about one centimeters or two centimeters uh, from the probe. This is the correct, okay, the correct setting for lung, ultrasonographic setting for lung. You can also modify uh, the uh, input, uh, the input settings by modifying the gain, the gain, okay. You can put the gain in order to don't have the uh, image saturation in the saturated images. So you have to see, you, you need to be able to see this sliding sign, this uh, sliding aspect of this pleural line, hyperechoic line. Okay, this is the correct set for a lung examination. So I, I am doing a longitudinal, longitudinal scans, and okay. you can see. Would you like me to interrupt you? Simply just because you are so clear, so just to repeat, you started by zoom the image. Okay. Second, uh, the position of the focal point. The focal point. point. Okay, uh, the set the focal point on the pleural line. The depth can be adequate for what you are seeing. So an image 
that uh, is uh, on one, two centimeter uh, in depth uh, from the, 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 the probe, okay. don't need the, uh, for the visual field over 30 centimeter long, okay? So three, four centimeters in depth? In depth, yeah. Okay, then third step, power. In order power. to get mechanical index less than one. Yeah, four. 0 0.7 is the optimal. Increase the frequency. Increase the frequency in order to have the maximal resolution for the for that probe and then gain and then gain and then gain in order to uh, don't have the pleural line saturated like highlighted like this it is not uh, an optimal image you have to set the and gain the screen please thank you okay so, is this good or not this is not this good is not this is good. Okay, fine. You have, you uh, need to see this sliding aspect of the pleural line. Okay. So, to me, it, uh, it's quite clear. Is it clear for all of you around the world? Can we move on? Okay. Okay, right. Another aspect is the orientation. The, these are uh, uh, longitudinal scans in which uh, you can see the rib, okay, with the, the shadowing aspect below. One rib, another rib, pleural line. So if you want to perform a, a um, transversal intercostal examination, you have to move your probe about 100 uh, okay you, you move to move to move your probe in intercostal space this is a transversal echographic evaluation of the pleural line so no, is it clear yes to me it's very very clear we can ask, we can ask also the young colleagues present here can we move on? Yes. Clear until now. So okay. Longitudinal transversal and especially intercostal. Fine. Now uh, we can move the camera on the on the patient. Yeah, Francesco now is uh, moving the camera. Okay, I would like to show you the uh, landmarks that Ricardo have shown before. First of all, the first point and the first examination are along the paravertebral line, okay? Transversal, transversal examinations. First step is the lowest, the basal examination, okay? This is the first landmark. Second mark, landmark, you have to move along the paravertebral line at the inferior angle of the uh, shoulder blade, okay? Third landmark is on the, in the, in, uh, on the uh, spine of the, uh, of the shoulder blade. Okay, now you can move on the contralateral hemithorax. Fourth landmark is on the paravertebral line, basal region. Five landmark at the inferior angle of the shoulder blade, sorry, inferior angle of the shoulder blade. And then the sixth point, the sixth landmark is on the spine of the shoulder blade. 
okay. Then let's move to the seventh landmark on the right side. On the right side. You have to choose the point below the internipple line along the mid axillary line. Seventh landmark, transversal evaluation, intercostal evaluation. The eighth point is on the mid axillary line above the internipple line. Okay. The same on the left side. Along the mid axillary line. Below the internipple line. The ninth point. The tenth point along the mid axillary line above the internipple line. Okay, and then let's move to the anterior regions. Eleventh landmark, the internipple line. Any clavicular line below the internipple line along the hemiclavicular line, 11. Then 12th along the mid clavicular line above the internipple line here. Thirteenth point along the mid axillary line on the left side, uh, mid axillary, mid clavicular line on the left side, below the internipple line, and then moving above the internipple line, the fourteenth, the fourteenth landmark, intercostal intercostal examination. Okay. Is it every, everything clear? Questions? You can write your questions. Yes, of course. And we do that on the chat. Okay. So the chat. At the moment, uh, everything seems to be clear. Even looking at our moderators <laughs> from each group around the African continent. So, what about now? Uh, are we going to move on to your lecture? Uh, I have a question. Sorry, okay. we have to, to wait because there is a, a question. But I also invite uh, Paola and the others to take advantage of this opportunity if you want to know more. Aspetta che non sto se puoi. Ok, yes. Let's take one minute. We are not in a hurry, so we can think, you can repeat in your mind the basic principles. If you want to... Ah, I have a question, actually. <laughs> actually. Ma ma è so, più ansia. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I'm sure you can answer. Um, mechanical index. Yeah. It's not so easy in each machine to understand where, how to modify it. Yeah. So how can we do? Shall we look around into the machine looking for the power button? Yeah. And second, is it related to... Uh, the presence of harmonic, uh, the presence of um, some uh, sophisticated uh, yes. uh, softwares, 
Thank you for your reply. Thank you for your question. Yeah, first part of the question. Yes, you have to look to the power button on the uh, on the ecographic machine. If is it possible? Okay, I give you a demonstration. No, no. On the on the machine. We okay. Have to wait. Our technician is <laughs> ready, but we have to be. Okay. If, if you, or if is it possible to? So now we are going to have a zoom on the machine. Okay. This is a, a touch screen model. And here, okay, here there is a, uh, there is a button. No problem, okay. Here there is a button with the power. Okay, you can modify the power and if you, uh, change the, the screen in uh, our... What are you looking for? I would like to, to show uh, how we can modify the power. Okay, okay so you want to have a, a picture of both oh. the... Or, or of the screen of my, my ultrasonographic machine. Okay. Okay. Here, the power, after pushing the button, the button, you can modify the power. Okay. And you can see the power going down or going up. And when going up with the power, you can see how the power influences the mechanical index. So the mechanical index is uh, uh, the energy which is uh, transferred to the uh, tissues with the ultrasound beam. So the ultrasound beam is able to uh, vibrate the, uh, to make a vibration of the tissues and this vibration can warm up the tissues so you can speak about mechanical index and thermal index. The more, the highest, the higher is the power, the higher will be the uh, vibration index and then the mechanical index. So this, uh, this condition is potentially uh, dangerous for the, for the, uh, the lung. So you, don't need to have high mechanical index, but uh, the, our advice is to keep low the mechanical index, to keep the mechanical index about 0 0.7. Okay. The second part of the question was related to the, uh, the harmonic imaging. So when you start with a convex probe in abdominal context, normally the uh, harmonic imaging is uh, inserted. So in uh, ultrasonographic lung images, it is not required to use, uh, to use uh, uh, harmonic imaging and cosmetic, cosmetic filters. So also in this case, we, uh, our advice is to avoid, to avoid harmonic images and to avoid cosmetic filters. Okay, uh, thank you. And uh, there is a question from uh, Tony. Um, and the question is Hassan, Hassanin. Hassanin, okay, Hassanin. Uh, it's about. Uh, it's about obese patients. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, now this is a question from Richard. Richard, about obese patients. Oh. If there is an obese patient, is the frequency and the setting the same? No, you have to, to modify the setting on the patient, clearly. Obviously, if you have an obese patient, you need to uh, have uh, a, the, the ultrasound beam to uh, penetrate better the tissues. So you have to put the frequency not at the highest low, uh, level, because the highest level uh, allow you to have a better resolution, but a bad penetration. So if you have an obese patient, you have to low the, uh, keep low the frequency of observation in order to reach the pleural line and in order to assess the pleural line um, so we will so, reduce the frequency. Yeah. This is the key point. Yeah. Okay. Another, okay. Sorry, can, can I make yeah. another point is the focus point. Yeah. It's yes. crucial in case of obese patient to focus our attention on the pleural line. Okay. Yeah, always and combine uh, these with the, the adjustment of the frequency as before described by the by the Always put the focal point on the pleural line. At the level yeah. of the pleural line. Yeah. Okay. Another question from Asanil. It's about position. Um, always uh, that position or supine? And uh, what do you say? In patients, I'm thinking about uh, ICU patients, uh, for example. Uh, yes, of course. Yeah. If you are not able to, uh, or the patient is not able to uh, to have to be seated or uh, supine in a, a, a supine position, um, okay, you can uh, perform your examination on the anterior regions, start uh, and the lateral region starting from the seventh landmark and going on until the 14th landmark. So posterior regions are very important to assess because the worst uh, alteration, the worst findings, the worst changes have been reported especially on the posterior regions in case of COVID-19 pneumonia. So if is it possible for you, move the patient in order to assess, to have an assessment of posterior region, obviously, if possible, okay? okay so you can ask somebody to rotate to the patient. If is it so possible, if is it is possible, yeah, yeah. The advice is, in case it is not possible to rotate, to, uh, to uh, put the patient on lateral uh, decubitus, you can, you, you, you can assess also lateral and anterior regions starting from the seventh landmark. Okay, good. So, Antonia, if I can add uh, yeah. another aspect uh, um, that can be useful in ICU setting, yes. uh, some patients can require mechanical ventilation and some can require prone position in order to improve the pulmonary tax effect. Of course. Of course, yeah. in this situation, the clinician can use the prone position of the patient in order to explore posterior part of the thorax and combine the information. But we can say that your favorite position is that one. Yes. Yeah, if it's it possible. If it's possible, if it's of course. Possible. Okay. Uh, there are other questions. Uh, we are very happy. So, you are very happy. So this is a question for you. Andrea mentioned that we have to keep low mechanical index because vibration could also be dangerous for the lung. Did we understood clearly? Yeah. It's not only a matter of quality of image. No. This is also a, a, a matter of dangerousness. Both. Okay. 
Okay, both. So the answer is both. The answer is both. The quality of the image is uh, highlighted by keeping a uh, my low. Okay, but uh, I uh, I am I can uh, um, can uh, create some uh, hemorrhage in on the lung surfaces micro hemorrhage so, yes okay. it it has been demonstrated by some works of Douglas Miller on mice okay Good. Good. now Good. now it is a matter of research in adult and pediatric condition yeah. in particular now there is a question for Francesca Moro i don't know where are you Francesca or Danilo because there is a question we saw how you select uh, the quadrants, the areas, according to the internipal line and uh, uh, clavicular line. But one colleague, uh, the question is, uh, if you have a pregnant woman, where is uh, the, uh, uh, it's written in a melanar line, the internipal, the, because we know that the condition, there is uh, the womb, yeah. and there is uh, the huge breast, so, can you explain, Francesca, Danilo, Danilo, why don't you come here to explain, because you examine so many pregnant women. So, did you follow the same method to recognize the areas? The yes, the microphone is here, so you can speak aloud. Okay. Uh, yes, I, when I examine pregnant women, I follow the same procedure. Obviously, in the anterior areas is a, a little bit more difficult because particularly if we are in an advanced stage of pregnancy, uh, the, the breast volume can be higher. So, and also the, um, the nipple line can be lower. So obviously in that situations, you need to evaluate case by case and be uh, uh, less, less strict with the procedure and try to have a scan of the anterior uh, lower quadrant and the anterior superior area. So because obviously in that situation so, you can need to move a yes. little bit the breast or ask the cooperation of the women. So it needs to be below the breast and above the breast. Yeah, Media yeah. and laterally in the interaction. Exactly, exactly. according to the situation, to the volume, obviously. The anterior, so the quadrant number uh, 12 and 14 are easier to okay. examine. I've never experienced problems in these areas, while on the uh, uh, quadrant number 11 and 13, yes, you need to be uh, not very strict with the rule, and you can need to move a little bit more uh, closer to the middle or to the lateral line. But we understood that we have to pay attention. The most important areas are the basal areas. Is it correct? Because yes. during for COVID and pneumonia, those areas are the most pathological ones. Am I right? Yes. But yes. of course, we have to explore the whole thorax. Exactly. Okay. Thank you so much. Now it's yeah. time to move to move on. Another question. So. Uh, Daniela from Uganda, she says, I have my life five. MI is 0.4 or 0.9. It doesn't allow 0.7, which is better, 0 0.4, 0 0.9. Okay, so because she tried and she, she learned. Okay, seven. okay. All right. the, the lowest in my yeah, as yeah. possible. Okay. Uh, you have to, you it's better you. for you to look there. Ah, uh, okay, okay. The, the lowest MI, which is possible, okay, between uh, uh, 0 0.9, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Less is more. Less is more. <laughs> so I missed uh, one question from Asha Mark Ahmed, but perhaps you, all, you already answered because uh, uh, he said, uh, what is the, the question? Okay, that a patient with a COVID-19, the best position is a chrono. Yeah. So uh, the first uh, six lines are the usable. As you said, you, you try to cover the most areas that we can. Okay, it's time to go on.
Okay. okay. You move on to... Let's move on to the presentation. Now we can continue with the second part of, the, of this presentation, focusing on the basic principles of semiotics. As before started, we consider chest ultrasonography as part of medical examination. Uh, one of the peculiarity of the chest ultrasonography is the combination of a morphological study of the chest wall until to the pleura, and then it becomes functional uh, and artifactual, of course, for the so-called pleuropulmonary field. The pleural line in a health subject separates a structure with high different acoustic impedance. So it acts like a mirror and amperes an ultrasonographic morphological study below. As you can see on the right part of the, of the slide, in the upper part of the, uh, of the slide, we can, uh, if it's possible to shift to the presentation text, Francesco. Okay. Um, you, uh, we can see in the, the upper part of the, the slide, a typical example of the passage from morphological evaluation of the chest wall until to the pleural line, and then the passage to an artifactual analysis below the pleural line. In this case, we have two scans performed with a linear probe in order to amplify this phenomenon. On the part on the in these images in the part of uh, uh, right part of the screen, you can see a scan performed with the linear probe, a transversal scan performed with the linear probe, in which we can identify a typical example of mirror effect of the plural line. Below the plural line, we have many types of horizontal artifact, commonly called hay lines. We prefer to call them horizontal artifact due to a combination of mirror effect and reverberation phenomena. Another advantage and peculiarity of chest ultrasonography is that this technique is dynamic, not static. Okay, so we can appreciate the movement of the pleural line synchronous with the breathing act. And so doing, we can identify the first of semiotic sign that we usually call it the sliding or gliding uh, sign. We can appreciate the movement of the pleural line, the first acoustic echogenic line that slides with the breathing gut. And it is located below the costal plane. Okay. If we put the probe transversally in each intercostal space, we can better appreciate the movement of the pleural line. Of course, we need to remember that the basal region of the thorax, especially in, in um, sitting position, are more ventilated compared with higher. So we can usually better appreciate this sliding at the basal region compared to the upper one. The second semiotic sign that we need to identify when we perform a chest ultrasonographic examination is the identification of curtain sign. Like a curtain, we have the passage of the plural line with the um, artifactual field befold it, composed essentially by horizontal artifact, the passage on as a cover on parenchymatous organs, organs that we can appreciate it from morphologically ultrasonographic point of view. Of course, we can obtain this curtain sign on the right, in this case on the liver, or 
on the left in case of uh, the curtain sign on spleen, if present, or, or kidney. So we can identify two kinds of phenomena below the pleural line that compose the so-called pleural plane. We can have reverberant artifact, horizontal artifact that we call um, commonly hay lines, and vertical artifact that are common called B lines and white lines. When we can the broken mirror of the pleural line, we can identify many, many conditions that broke the mirror effect of the pleural line. We can have thickness of interlobular septa. We can have thickness of intralobular septa. Or we can have also an alteration of the peripheral airspace geometry. Of course, all these conditions can coexist. And they are not mutually exclusive. In this case, the artifact visible on the pathological line fields are interface phenomena that occurs at the level of the pleural plane and peripheral lung parenchyma. Therefore, we can have vertical artifact in every point of the pleural surface in which the normal specular reflector is interrupted. In this way, the ultrasound can see, of course, in relation to its wavelength, and we can identify a structure without impedance that might allow it to insinuate itself among highly reflected surface. Now I pass to my friend and colleague, Andreas Margiassi, that describe in detail what are the different pathological findings that we can uh, obtain. Before it, I think that we can dedicate it some minutes for other answer and question section. Okay, there is a question we already discussed about this, but uh, perhaps you can say something more about how to make, to, to choose the right frequency and how to move at the focal point. Okay. So perhaps you can repeat yeah. uh, uh, there is a button yeah okay simply that simply with a button there is a there is a button but it's a different on the different machines you have to look for the frequency and they told us that because we are looking at the pleural line which is very very superficial we have to use uh, the highest frequency as possible uh, if oh. only when the fast is very of course very it well depends on, it it depends on the yeah. you have to reduce a little bit the frequency because your key point is to look at the pleural line we can use the approach mnemotic approach fftd frequency focusing power and depth in italia is more simple because <laughs> of double f and double p Double F, F and double P, P in Italian. Okay, in English, okay, so double frequency, frequency focal, focus, focus power, power and depth. And depth. And depth. depth. Okay. okay. And uh, I'm so sorry because uh, Richard uh, is saying that the slides are not clearly readable. I don't know why, but perhaps uh, Richard, we can keep in contact and in contact to understand whether. Um, it's a matter of uh, size, font size, or perhaps uh, the quality of the video clip. If you can tell us, it's a matter of a quality of a video clip, or are not readable because of uh, uh, graphs uh, and the text. Uh, so we really want you to put it uh, these uh, three video clips. Is it uh, nicely? Visible for you because these are very, very important to understand the normal lung pattern. Please, Richard, if you can, or if you want to write me in private so we can chat while moving 
on the on the left. Chart. On the left. Yeah. On the right part, uh, on the video in this right part, uh, in upper part of the. I don't the... know why uh, Ricardo the mouse is not visible on the screen. So Moving. you are talking about. Uh, Be before I, I, I can. I mean the three images in any case. So you are talking about uh, the video on the on the right. Okay, don't worry. You can explain. Okay. We so you are saying that. Yeah. In order to start the, the video. video. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now it's running and the mouse is visible. Thank you. Okay. In the right uh, video. Okay. Yeah. There. You can better appreciate the sliding of the plural line and the presence before, below it of different horizontal reverberation. We found this phenomenon so-called hay lines in uh, this group of horizontal artifacts we have a phenomena due to the combination of two physical phenomena the first is the reverberation phenomena the second is the mirror effect of the interfaces included in the depth of the chest wall of course i have uh, previously said this uh, sliding it uh, is better appreciated if we perform transversal or horizontal they are uh, uh, similar scan compared with longitudinal or vertical uh, scan okay, I hope that's so uh, I have to memorize a lines right a lines or horizontal, horizontal. Like yes mirror effect means normal yeah. yes fine and uh, i'm going uh, i have to appreciate the plural sliding yes and above superficially everything is not movable because there is a skin yes. the muscles and okay. fat uh, muscle okay okay and this is uh, um as I have before described, this is a, a peculiarity of the chest ultrasonography that uh, we can uh, appreciate the combination of a morphological evaluation of the chest wall and artifactual evaluation of the pleuropulmonary field below the pleural line in healthy condition. So if we can summarize what are the typical ultrasonographic aspect of the normal pattern no normal lung because normal pattern. pattern because in a healthy condition we cannot appreciate the lung from morphological point of view we can obtain information derived from a lung normally ventilated normally ventilated so morphological examination of the subcutaneous layer because it's a tissue tissue of course lung is ventilated there is air so we cannot do a morphological examination when it's a well ventilated we can only assess artifacts yes and we have to get information from artifacts for right? artifacts yes this okay, is very so now we are going to learn the typical or not the typical artifacts Artifact. am i right Okay. But you it's know a... I'm a gynecologist, so usually I do a morphological scan yeah. because I scan the uterus, the ovaries, the babies, uh, the fetus, uh, the amniotic fluid. Here I have to change my mind. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If we remember always the concept, the philosophical concept that this is an extension of medical examination, this is one sign, but different information like in medical examination okay. of the patient okay so this, this is could a... be crucial for us for... because if you are pneumologist you know how to do the clinical examination i forgot a little bit how to do that <laughs> so that's why i have to keep in mind that i cannot solve everything by using ultrasound i have to put that together with the clinical information right okay, okay thank you now back to Okay. So, In if you don't mind, Andrea, without uh, the mask, uh, it okay. will be fine. 
Sorry, the, the is it is better? They don't want to remove it, of course, because of safety. But I understand <laughs> that, that, that for our colleagues, uh, the repasso we have to take a look also at your mouth. Thank you. Okay. For okay. Okay. Okay, let's move to this slide. And this slide summarizes the, the behavior of the ultrasound beam in uh, when uh, there is a, a, um, an ultrasonic evaluation of lungs. So, in this cartoon, okay, in this cartoon on the left side, you, you have the normal inflated lung with the normal peripheral space geometry. These bubbles, uh, this disposition of bubbles, uh, is typical of normal inflated lungs. In this case, the ultrasound beam is not able to see anything it, because of the huge difference in acoustic impedance between hair and tissues. The ultrasound beam, when reaching the pleural surface, can be simply reflected to the probe. This, is, this explains why uh, we have horizontal reverberating artifacts in normal condition. You cannot have any information from the, the surface of the lung. When the peripheral, this is the, uh, the three-dimensional reconstruction of the surface of a normal inflated lung. And uh, in this condition, the ultrasound beam can be simply reflected to the probe. But uh, in this condition, the peripheral a space geometry is completely subverted. In this case, the ultrasound beam in relation to its wavelength and in relation to the characteristics of these uh, channels is able to see to uh, to, uh, to to see these acoustic micro holes and to insinuate between these bubbles and this condition generates the vertical artifact this is a three dimensional reconstruction of a, a collapsed lung and you can see the surface of a collapsed lung, and you can see the acoustic micro holes in which the ultrasound beam can insinuate. So the ultrasonographic assessment of lung is a, a study of the porosity of the superficial porosity of the lungs. In uh, in chest ultrasonography, only three kinds of images are possible. First of all, in the left side, you can see a normal condition, okay, in which you can recognize horizontal reverberating artifacts, the pleural line and horizontal artifacts below. This is the condition which the peripheral space geometry is conserved. In this case, the ultrasound beam is simply reflected to the probe. On the right side, you can see a consolidated lung. In this case, the lung and the peripheral space geometry is completely subverted and transformed in a tissue. In this case, the ultrasound beam is able to see the structure, the morphological structure of the lung. Okay, this is the case of pneumonia atelectasis, in which the residual air is very, very low. In the center, you see these vertical artifacts and the condition different from the right, the left side and the right side. In this case, the lung, the peripheral space geometry is subverted, but the lung is not completely consolidated, but not completely normal. 
in this case, the ultrasound beam is able to see many acoustic traps and many acoustic channels on the surface of these lungs. And you see these vertical artifacts that indicates the hyperdense, not consolidated state of the lung. This condition, characterized by this vertical artifact, has been called the sonographic interstitial syndrome. Let's take a look to the sonographic interstitial syndrome. Okay, the video works. So you can see these vertical artifacts, these hyperechoic vertical images that arises arise from the pleural surface and move with the sliding sign. Vertical artifacts moving, uh, moves with the sliding sign. This is another example of sonographic interstitial syndrome. And another one. Okay, in this case, the information is that there is an hyperdense preconsolidated state of the lung because of subverted peripheral space geometry. But you have no information about the specificity. We cannot say that this is a pneumonia, this is a interstitial pneumonia, interstitial lung disease, this is an acute respiratory distress syndrome. You are not able to see. These images are without specificity, without clinical information, and without a multi-regional assessment. This is another image, another video from hyperdense lung. The information is peripheral space geometry is surely subverted in this, in, in this echographic evaluation. This is a worst condition in which the lung, in which the lung is subverted. You can see the white lung, which is a pulmonary white field but you begin, begin to uh, see pulmonary consolidations, subpleural pulmonary consolidation, because the air content is gradually reducing. So how can we give specificity to sonographic interstitial syndrome? We have to focus on, firstly, extension of, and distribution of these lesions on these uh, uh, aspects. Okay, if you have the sonographic interstitial syndrome only in a focal discrete region of the lung, you can see, you can uh, hypothesize that there is a peripheral high space geometry subversion in a focal point of the lung. This is the case of a pulmonary hemorrhage. This is the case of a pulmonary contusion, for example, or, or this is the case of a pulmonary inflammation surrounding a consolidated nucleus, a consolidated core, like in case of bronchopneumonia. Let's move to a diffuse bilateral examination. If sonographic interstitial syndrome is bilateral, diffuse, with homogeneity, without sparing areas, you can suspect that this is a condition in which the, uh, the lung is secondary involved this is a secondary pathology of the lung. Often you can see these, uh, these findings with a gravitational effect. So you can see a bilateral diffuse homogeneity with gravitational effect, and you can suspect a cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Let's move to the third part. Okay, 
bilateral diffuse sonographic interstitial syndrome with disomogeneity. In this case, you can see spared areas, patchy areas, and this is the case of a primary involvement of the lung. It's not a secondary involvement of the lung. Primary pathology that is involving the, the, the lung. Okay, um, this work that uh, has been published, uh, published some years uh, ago has not been yet denied from uh, Gino Soldati and Roberto Copetti. Gino Soldati is, uh, uh, and Roberto Copetti are our mentors, in which they uh, tried to uh, recognize some specific aspects of the cardiogenic sonographic interstitial syndrome and the pneumogenic sonographic interstitial syndrome. And you can see that pleural changes or sliding signs reduced of absent and spared areas or pulmonary consolidation are characteristic more specific of a pneumogenic sonographic interstitial syndrome not cardiogenic sonographic interstitial syndrome. So the pneumogenic sonographic interstitial syndrome is characterized by... Okay. Okay, that doesn't work. Sorry. Okay. The pneumogenic sonographic interstitial syndrome, okay, the video work. Uh, uh, the sonographic interstitial syndrome is characterized by irregularities of the pleural line with sliding sign, which is reduced. And you can see irregularities, little consolidation, subpleural consolidation, or clearly a white line. This is the case, and the sliding sign very reduced. This is the uh, aspect uh, typical of pneumogenic sonographic interstitial syndrome. Patchy pattern is an another characteristic typical of pneumogenic sonographic interstitial syndrome. And you can see areas in which you have a normal, linear, regular uh, pleural line with horizontal reverberating artifacts very close to white lung zones, white lung zones with pleural irregularities. It, it is typical of a pneumogenic sonographic interstitial syndrome and not of cardiogenic sonographic interstitial syndrome. When you have this image and this video, you have to focus your attention on the white lung, not on the normal aspects, okay? So this image is characterized by a white lung, the patchy pattern, but you, you have to focus your attention on the white lung and not on the, on the normal pattern. These are videos from the same aspects and you can see a normal, quite almost, almost uh, normal condition with the pleural line, with the sliding conserved, horizontal reverberating artifacts, some vertical artifacts very close to a pleural irregularities and, uh, and a clearly white lung. In this case, my attention uh, is on the white lung in the, in the right side. Okay, may I ask you here, so this, is a, this was quite a tricky for me, yeah. because uh, when I looked at this video, I was uh, affected by the vertical artifacts and I couldn't see the white area. Francesco, yes, if you can look again at the video. But Andrea, after again, after showing it again, again, he told me, no, Antonia, if you see some white area with a no movement of the pleural line, you have to focus on that point. Yeah. The next, 
we can see close to that some of the vertical artifacts. These patchy areas is something very indicative of a sonographic interstitial syndrome. Yes, and worse right. condition because and the pneumogenic sonographic interstitial syndrome because this is a clear dishomogeneity a clear dishomogeneous pattern which is not typical of cardiogenic sonographic interstitial syndrome okay like in this case a white line with a pleural line very altered very uh, irregular cobbled the course very close to a normal pattern with horizontal reverberating artifacts so which is uh, which is the the uh, worst condition that uh, on which i have to put my attention obviously on white lung this is a patchy white lung pattern which is very indicative of sonographic pneumogenic sonographic interstitial syndrome if bilateral and diffused why bilaterally is very important in case of uh, COVID-19 viral pneumonia, because CT scans of the, uh, of the chest are clearly shown uh, that findings are bilateral, subpleural, and mostly involving lateral and dorsal the posterior regions. So you have to assess surely anterior regions okay anterior regions are surely involved but the worst conditions are located on the lateral and dorsal regions with patchy distribution and you can see this patchy distribution look at this lesion okay a ground glass opacity on ct scan uh, some consolidation very close to a normal region of the lung. Can you show again, with the mouth, huh? consolidation? Okay, yeah. again. Consolidation. You, you see the, the mouse, okay? Okay? Yeah. Yeah. A pathological finding on CT scan very close to a spared area. So okay. if I. I uh, make my uh, ultrasonographic assessment on the surface uh, sorry on the surface of the lung in this zone i can see a white lung probably a white lung or white lung with consolidations very close to a, a spare area okay again covid19 pneumonia viral pneumonia patchy distribution normal normal lung very close to a pathological finding, ground glass opacities, and consolidations. So these are a, a worst patterns in which a white lung, a white lung, is with peripheral consolidation, peripheral small subpleural consolidation that may emerge to the surface of the lung. So you can see a white lung, okay, a white lung with consolidation, small peripheral subpleural consolidation. This is the case of worse condition. So you can uh, you can create, and we created a score a scoring system in which you can distinguish in case of COVID nineteen pneumonia and classify this alteration. Uh, I would like to greatly thank in this uh, scoring si system, both Libertario Demi and uh, our mentor Gino Soldati. This is score zero. In case of score zero, you can see the pleural line uh, with the uh, indicated by the yellow arrow, okay, in case of a convex probe examination and in case of linear probe examination, very linear, regular, without irregularities and horizontal reverberating artifacts. In this case, 
you can um, you can say that you are assessing a normal peripheral space geometry and a normal lung and this is, this is the score zero score one the preural line is has some irregularities some little irregularities which uh, have been uh, highlighted by the linear probe for instance and some vertical artifacts are associated with this pattern this is the case of score one moving on score two peripheral space geometry is uh, furtherly uh, altered furtherly altered and in this case uh, you can see some small consolidation sonographic interstitial syndrome more and more irregularities on the pleural line and, and this uh, is characteristic of a worst condition till to the worst conditions which are represented by the score tree with white lung and white lung with or without consolidations subpleural consolidation that may emerge to the pleural sundays this is the case of a score three score three in our scoring the system okay uh, many questions um, i tried to answer some questions via internet but uh, now it's time for a break because it's uh, four o'clock <coughs> so i think that uh, uh, we have to drink uh, some water, we have to stand up a little bit, and so we can uh, start again uh, at, uh, in 20 minutes, uh, right? So in Italy now is, uh, it's uh, 4 p.m., so we can be back at uh, 4.20. Okay. Right? In the meantime, we can continue by writing your questions, uh, and we will try to answer. Just for those uh, who could, uh, um, I mean, could be connected later, don't worry, because we will try to repeat and to show some videos again. So the key points uh, will be repeat and repeat and repeat again. Okay? Okay. So enjoy your break. See you in 20 minutes. Bye. Bye. Francesco, Francesco, yeah.
Aspetta, vai ancora. Chi propose and... Good afternoon. Welcome back to the second part of uh, this, uh, this afternoon together. Uh, we are running this hour workshop. The title is uh, Fast Lang Ultrasound Teaching Program Beyond Europe During COVID-19 Pandemic, Africa's Reality. Now, in the first part, for those who were not attending, we, we taught our pneumologist, very, very experienced in lung ultrasound examination. They taught us the basic principles of lung ultrasound. We could also have a, a practical examination, how to modify the, the tools on the ultrasound machine in order to get a good quality ultrasound image. Then uh, they taught us how to assess uh, the ultrasound because they underlined we do a morphological examination for the muscles, the, the surface of the thorax, but because of the air we've done within the lung, we are going to assess artifacts uh, looking at the lung by using ultrasound examination. But don't worry. If you missed something, we are going to repeat because we want really to focus on the key points in order to use this very, very useful tool in this emergency situation, that is a COVID-19 infection. Now, before starting again, can you, can you listen to me? Because perhaps the voice is not so high, somebody is telling me. A little bit loudly. Okay, thank you. So before starting again at the lecture, we're going to look together at a tutorial video. We prepared a four minutes tutorial video with the basic principles of lung ultrasound in pregnancy, in pregnant women. So if you are ready, I wanted to ask my technicians if you're ready, we can look at the video. Okay, we published this uh, tutorial video in the uh, journal Ultrasound in Obstetrics and Gynecology. So I would like also to have the audio because, uh, it's important to look at uh, the slides and the audio. Let's try again. After fetal evaluation, it is possible with the best ultrasound how to perform lung ultrasound in pregnant women. We propose on how to 
practical approach, describing the basic principles of land ultrasound, showing images of both physiology and pathology. We show an ultrasound examination of the lung in a human during pregnancy. Lung ultrasound can be done by using both linear and convex transabdominal probes. After fetal evaluation, it is possible with the probe to go up to the thorax and to assess the lung. First, the probe is positioned longitudinally, and we see the plural line, A lines, and ribs with the posterior shaft. Then, the probe is positioned in the intercostal space, and we see the plural line and A lines without the ribs. Basic principles of lung ultrasound. In a normally aerated lung, the only pulmonary detectable structure is the pleura, visualized as a highly hyperechoic horizontal line due to the reflection of the ultrasound beam. Indeed, in the lungs there is air, and air blocks ultrasound beam. This phenomenon generates the typical image of the normal lung, characterized by the plural line and behind the plural line, some repetitive hyperechoic parallel horizontal lines. These are artifacts due to an effect called mirror sign. They are called A lines. When the probe is positioned in the intercostal space, the plural line and A lines are visible with no interruption. When the probe is positioned longitudinally, it is possible to see ribs with the posterior shadowing, plural line, and A lines. This composition has been called bat sign due to the similarity with a bat. In addition to the hyperechoic line of the pleura, which is moving with the breath, the so-called pleural sliding, we can observe some thin perpendicular stria. This is a normal finding in physiological cases. Moreover, during breathing, the expansion of the aviated lung apotosis generates the so-called curtain sign, which corresponds to the appearance and disappearance of the aviated lung. When a pathological event alters the plural line, ultrasound images show a long hyperechoic line touching the bottom of the screen as a comet or multiple thickened hyperechoic lines, or short lines arising for a few millimeters from the pleura. These lines are called B lines, and they are present in case of interstitial lung disease, acute respiratory distress syndrome, pulmonary fibrosis, pulmonary edema, lung contusion, and perilesional consolidative areas. During inflammatory lung disease, the plural line is irregular and thickened, and the white area, the so-called ultrasonography white line, is recognized. Neither A lines nor the single B lines are visible. When the lung periphery is partially collapsed, the involved area of the lung loses air and becomes a solid organ. The consolidation appears as hypochoric areas of different dimensions. Methodology. The upper, middle, and lower areas of each surface, anterior, posterior, and lateral of each hemithorax should be scanned. In each area, longitudinal and intercostal scans should always be performed. In clinical conditions, suspicious for infectious disease, it is important to use all the safety precautions. The probe should be wrapped by a sterile cover, and the ultrasound machine should be disinfected after the use. New generation wireless ultrasound devices could play an important role in facilitating the examination reducing the risk of contamination. Okay, thank you. As I told you, you can... It's uh, of a free access. So, okay, thank you very much for the video. Perhaps uh, you couldn't listen to me. 
So uh, just to remind you that it's very, very short, very, very simple indeed. We prepared it just to explain to colleagues, to our colleagues, gynecologists and obstetrics, how to use a lung ultrasound in pregnant women. So you can find it in, the, in our journal, Ultrasound in Obstetrics and Gynecology. And I want to thank Paula for your voice and Emerson for the cartoons and for the editing of the video. Of course, Francesco Moro, because we prepared together uh, this uh, video. So now, now we are going to start a more interactive uh, part of uh, the workshop. And let me repeat with you, let me look again at the na African nations map. So I would invite each mentor, mentor, each moderator, I would say, to come here so we can at least uh, mention each nation who participated or are in contact at this moment with us. And if some colleagues from Africa, they want to tell us how is the situation there, where you are in your hospital, in your area. And because of time, we would like to give three minutes each, just to have an idea how is the situation there. So let's start with Burundi. Uh, can you see the map? Francesco, would you like to show the map of the Africa? So we know Burundi is there, uh, Bujumbu is there. And uh, who is the mentor? Not the mentor, the moderator, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Again, please come here. Are you in contact with uh, one colleague? Yeah, they, speak? they should be online. Francesco, if you can open the microphone of uh, the colleague in Burundi. Let's uh, wait a few seconds because it will be. The name is uh, Richard. Or, or Lionel. Or they Lionel. Are both together. So, Richard, yeah, okay. Richard. Yamur and me, or Lionel. It's very, very difficult for us to pronounce uh, this, the, yes, uh, the name and the surname, but I hope that you can, that Francesco can reach mm -hmm. and to open the microphone. Are you ready? So are you in contact uh, via WhatsApp with them? Yes. What okay. did they say? They, they should be connected. Do you know them? Yes. Did you get some information about yes. the no. situation, the hospital? No, because no. no. Okay. Okay, Richard, can you hear me? Yes, I get you very well. Fantastic! <laughs> Please uh, tell us uh, something about uh, the situation there. Uh, the situation here in Burundi is not uh, as bad as you can imagine. Unfortunately, the line is very unstable. So, So we will try via WhatsApp. Yes. It's... No, no, you can just continue with this uh, Zoom. It's good. Is it possible? Yes, it is. Yes. Now, yes. please, uh, go, go ahead. Now we can hear you. Okay. I was saying the situation here is not as bad as you can think. Okay. We are ha we are having uh, almost 19 cases of confirmed COVID-19 patients. Did you manage? And this in these 19 people, we have. Sorry. 
Did you manage this patient? This patient. Uh, our, our university hospital has not been appointed as a clinic center, but we have a specific hospital which has been uh, prepared for receiving this kind of patients and uh, a special team for it who are managing them. But we have been attending a training on uh, infection prevention and control, which has been done in all these uh, facilities so as to upgrade people, to upgrade the medical staff with skills so that in case we receive such cases, we should, we, should, we should handle them. And our hospital is now a transitory center because all the cases received and uh, suspected of having COVID-19 are kept aside in isolation room, handled for the first care, and then sent to the specialized center, which is set in a, another hospital, which has been chosen by the governmental system. Good, thank you so much, Richard. We really hope that lung ultrasound You're examination well. could be of some help for you. It has, be, it has been of great help because here the uh, ultrasound examination is not common because some of our uh, special physicians are not using it for exploration of these cases. Uh, just because of uh, not having it as uh, part of our equipment, as access equipment, accessible equ equipment, sorry. And also that uh, some are missing skills of use of it. We have been so much interested by the introduction of the technical manner, a part of, uh, of this uh, ultrasound equipment. And it has been very interesting. We are in a room, we are two with the Lionel, Following this, this uh, uh, presentation, we are interested, and we from uh, the university hospital. He hello, okay. I am Lionel. Let's keep in touch. Yes, yes we. Okay. Thank nice you. Thank you. Now let's move on to well, Kenya. Oh. Kenya. 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 Who is the moderator of? Uh, Kenya, Matteo. Matteo, perhaps you are in contact with the doctor Daniele, Daniele Ciuto. Ciuto. He seems to be an Italian doctor. Yes, he is. is. He? An Italian doctor. Yes. Daniele, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, we hope to. Oh, now we are also looking. Oh. Hi. Tell us Hello. something about the situation. Hello everyone and uh, congratulations for the very nice initiative you have done. Yes, um, yes, I'm representing Kenya. I'm actually in it, uh, originally from Italy, although I've been working now for seven years for a government hospital in Northern Kenya. And the situation here, it's, uh, I don't know, I don't know to say if it's good or bad, actually. We are uh, running around 50 Today is the 55th day since coronavirus have reached Kenya. Uh, we have up today 620 confirmed cases of coronavirus. But uh, we are testing very little. The, this is actually the big problem. We are actually in uh, 55 days, we have tested 28,000 patients for a population of 50 million. So basically, actually, we don't know. We don't know exactly if we are working in a safe area because uh, 600 cases are not too many, or there is a yeah. huge number of underground cases that uh, we don't know. And actually we come out very strongly in some time. But basically I think this is the big question about all the African countries. If you look at the yeah. slope of COVID-19 in these countries, it, it appears to go very much slower compared to yeah. Europe. And so yeah. that's how we're doing now so far. Yeah. So okay, now it's better. Thank you so much. I, if you can, 
please uh, let's uh, send us some uh, more data, more information, also during the week. But at the end of, the, of this afternoon, I will tell you how can we be in touch during the week until the next uh, um, moment, the next day. On, uh, uh, I don't remember the date, uh, uh, 18 May, May 14. Okay. Hello? The doctor, yes. Dr. Daniel from Ethiopia. Are you there? Another one. Daniel or Ajmelash? Yes. Or Bereket? Sorry, let's wait if you. I was asking them if uh, someone was online. Was a little bit louder so that they can. Okay, I was asking on the group, uh, on the WhatsApp group, if there was uh, someone online, but uh, they didn't uh, answer. But I don't know if they're watching because uh, they had a little bit of problems with the networks. So. Okay. So I don't know if they are online Sorry. right now. Sera Leone. And now, uh, okay, Danilo, you are in contact with uh, uh, Sera Leone. Yes. Are you there? What's yes. the name? Soria, Soria Sova. Yes, I'm here. Hi, Soria. Soria Sova. Long time. Yeah, fine, Dan Danilo. Great. Yes. Great to see you. Hello? Together in Sierra Leone. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm seeing you. Great. Yes. So happy. Are you at the hospital? Hello. The line is very bad here. Are you getting me now? Sierra Leone is trained in Hello? Yes, we hear you. Hello? Uh, are you getting me? <laughs> yes, we can hear you. Hello? So, as you can see, the line is very, very unstable. Okay, so you have to go on just to say hello, hello? at least. So, from... Uh, can you hear Indiana. me now? Yes. yes, maybe yes now. Would you like to yeah, try again? Can you again? get me now? Hello? Yes. Yes, we hear you. Yes. We're gonna text you. Okay, Salia Soa from Sierra Leone. Great, we hear you. Okay, thank you very much for such a very educative program. Thank you, Salia. And now, okay. uh, for, for us okay. in Sierra Leone, hello? Yes, yes, go, go. Okay, for us in Sierra Leone for now, we have 128 positive cases. So out of which we have now 57 that have recovered from the sick. And we have 16 yeah. deaths as of now. We have 16 deaths as of now and 57 recoveries. At present, as I'm talking, we have 100, 102 that are presently at the isolation center undergoing treatment, but we don't have anyone for now that is under critical condition. Okay, thank you very much, Soria. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And now, Uganda. Uh, Uganda. For Uganda, I'm in contact with uh, Dr. Daniela Senese. Daniela Senese, another Italian name. Daniela? Are you able to, to tell us something? We are looking for your microphone. And how many from Uganda? Uh, only three, but uh, only Daniela for communication and interact. So Daniela, if you're able to speak, uh, we are going to listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sì, mi avete detto. L'hai trovato? Daniela Senese. Can you raise your hand? When I call you, if you want, there is a button on Zoom, you can raise the hand so that we can identify you easily. In the meantime, I'm going to invite some colleagues from Somaliland. Who is the moderator for Somaliland? And Dr. Asha Omar Hamed. Asha Omar Hamed. Are you there? She just text me that she should be there. Okay. Dr. Asha? Hello. 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 Yes. yes. Hello. Here we are. Yes. Antonia, hello. Oh, yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> I hear, but I, uh, are you yes. seeing me or are you just hearing me? Yes, we can We can only hear you, but it's it's okay. You can explain okay. if you want Fine. the situation. Okay. Good. Good afternoon. <clears throat> I, first of all, first of all, I congratulate Italian group, Italian doctors, the very good job you are doing. And uh, I'm also Somali Italian. Uh, I'm from Rome, La Sapienza. Uh, <laughs> but originally Mogadishu, Somalia. And right now I'm in Mogadishu, Somalia. I am um, gynecologist, so I am Antonia's colleague. Uh, here in COVID-19, as you have, you hear other Africans, colleagues, it is not much as uh, no, uh, North America and uh, uh, Europe. It is less because the death up to now, all entire continent is less than 2000. In Somalia, uh, cases positive are 873 and the death is 39, recovered 87. But this on, on uh, out of uh, population less than 20 million. But this number is not reliable because of the culture, because what the people they think about coronavirus, because of the many myths and many stigma. Uh, we have a center in Mogadishu Somalia after civil war, you, as you know, uh, they are federalism. So there is a Somaliland, Puntland, Jubaland, uh, other states, five states, but the central government is in Mogadishu and they established a hospital for quarantine. But people, they are running away from the quarantine centers. All this number positive from the lab, central lab uh, guided by WHO, they are quarantining themselves in their houses. Serious cases only, which needs the oxygen. Hello, are you hearing me? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. very well. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. Serious cases only, which needs oxygen or sometimes intubation, which there is no a ventilator up to now and, uh, um, in uh, Mogadishu. They are in that center hospital uh, called the Martino Hospital. Um, the number of deaths we have is still a question mark because people, they don't want respect uh, the rules and regulars about coronavirus before death and after also death, the barrier, the how they manage. So that's why they are running away from the hospitals and from the centers. But after, after all that things, we are trying to, to push them, the prevention. The first thing we are doing in Somalia is um, a lot of effort, the prevention, keeping the distance, uh, stay at home, which is not possible. 
because people they are going to work, people are very poor. So if, if they stay at home, they don't have nothing to eat. Uh, at least there is a, um, in the evening, they cannot go from eight o'clock yeah. to five o'clock in the evening, just to reduce that. Uh, at the end, of the, I, want, I want to underline the, the, in the in, um, theory we had, me, I'm a medical doctor 22 years ago, the theory was viruses cannot survive in high temperature. And I think that we can see here in Somalia. Yes, positivity of coronavirus, but no symptoms more, many symptoms. And virus, the spread of the virus is many, is much, 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 much limited. Oh, thank you so much, Asha. It was so and, uh, clear. At the end of me, I, I so, so appreciate this ultrasound and I have to even say, thank you very much and congratulations of these colleagues, Antonia, Andrea, Ricardo, because to be honest with you, this is my first time theory and practice. I have seen ultrasound on the lungs. So congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I have to applaud. Someone here can okay, they applaud me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I hope uh, that uh, you you can speak also Italian. So you mentioned myself, Andrea, and Ricardo, but you will uh, be listening Danilo very soon. So now thank you again, uh, Djibouti. Yeah. These are the so Djibouti. We had some colleagues uh, connected wow. with us, and they. They had to work, right? Yeah. What did they say? Loudly. Uh, it was only one doctor from Djibouti, and it was very happy to participate in our course, but it was very a little bit loudly. So very happy to participate. Very happy to participate without to our course, but uh, it was said, but he had to leave the course before for the work. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Then Tanzania. Uh, Daniela from Uganda. Oh, Daniela. Hello. Daniela, where are you? We wanted to see your face. There, you have to make uh, the distance. Uh, otherwise, uh, we are causing problems. Hi, Daniela. Please uh, tell us uh, something from your area. Try to speak. We cannot hear you. Why? I am talking. Yes. I'm saying, I will say, you did not hear me. Hello? Yes, you can speak. Okay. Uh, I'm Italian. I've been in Uganda for 10 years. Um, in the situation in Uganda is this, the first case was uh, diagnosed in, on the 20th of March, and now we have 100 positive cases. The first case was uh, positive from the airport. After that, they closed the airport and they, uh, they, they checked all the all the people arrived from abroad uh, since the 7th of March. After that, and they contact uh, and they quarantine all of them. After that, they started checking the truck drivers at the borders with Kenya, Tanzania, Congo, and Rwanda. And uh, more about 55 patients has been already discharged about 30, more than 30 patients, they are truck drivers from other country. They have been sent back to their country and they have, they have been done contact tracing. In this country, they do contact tracing from Ebola outbreaks. Uh, of course, the problem is the number of tests because uh, we have done so far about uh, 43,000 tests, about three to 4,000 tests every day. Uh, they started also tests in the community. 
the population and so far they found uh, some cases. So they, after that, they track the contract and try to put them in quarantine. So it is, uh, it would be better to have more, more tests, of course, because the prevention, like my colleague was saying, social distancing is very difficult. Yes, I can understand. Daniela, I hope that you can find a lung ultrasound examination quite useful, but you will tell us during the week. Yes. We will Okay. Keep in contact. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. And now we have uh, to call Tanzania. Not Tanzania. Cameroon. Cameroon. Doctor, let me see the name. Are you there? Doctors yes. from Cameroon? Yes. You are the we are, we are pre, -particip uh, pre participants from Cameroon. Uh, the same with the Noe Sobe. Hello. Hi. Where are you? They have some problems with the connection. Now we are online. Okay. Hello. Okay. Hi. You. Hi. Very nice to see you. Can you tell us something about your situation there? Good evening, everyone. Yeah. yeah. We wanted to know something about you. Okay, I'm Dr. George. I'm a gynecologist. I... I'm talking about Cameroon now. We have uh, today 200, around 216 cases of COVID. 2000, 2000. So we are very glad in our side to, to have you and to have this uh, exchange. So in uh, our practice, we did not have no case of uh, COVID, no, uh, in our areas, in our hospital, we did not have no case. Uh, however, we have a small experience from lung ultrasound in the case of some pathologies, like, uh, Global infusion, some condensation, and uh, uh, some pathologies. You know, unfortunately, there is a, a back noise, and it's not so easy to understand <laughs> the words. But Hello. together with Valeria, Valeria could read what you can write on the text and you can tell us about that. But thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. And now, can you see us? We want just to say hello at least. And then I want to mention Burkina Faso. Yes. Oh, you are May I ask you to close your microphones? Professor Hussein. Professor Hussein, we try to hello with you. We can try just a friend 
Francesco, if you can just ask Professor Husseini, if it's so. Yes. Hello. Hello. Okay, I think we have to move on. But if you are there, are there you can find Paula so that uh, we can know something more about you. So, Francesco, did you move all the microphone? Yes, yeah? so that we can. Pronto, Francesco? Okay, now it's time to invite uh, uh, Dr. Andrea or Ricardo because you had to conclude okay. uh, some slides on uh, the typical findings on lung ultrasound. Just to summarize, we first learned about uh, the basic principles of the they described the normal and the typical interstitial syndrome and the differential diagnosis between pneumogenic and cardiogenic pulmonary disease. Okay, right? Thank you for helping me. And now you wanted to say something more about consolidations, right? Please go ahead. Thanks, Antonio. Only a few words about two other pathologic conditions that can involve the lung and uh, uh, that can intercept through lung ultrasonography, ultrasonographic evaluation. The first, of course, is the pulmonary consolidation. Uh, we can see in this image, in this ultrasonographic image on the left of the slide, a typical aspect of uh, uh, pulmonary consolidation in which we can appreciate the texture of the, the region of the lung involved by the process. Uh, we can observe a typical hypoechogenic area of the lung in which we can identify some white spot, some white echogenic spot that correspond to the heavy content within the bronchus, compressed by the uh, consolidation. Um, the main advantages of the ultrasonographic assessment is the possibility to obtain information regarding the pulmonary involvement the um, eventual uh, presence of uh, pleural effusion and the impact of the diaphragmatic um, movement. Other important information that we can obtain by ultrasonographic assessment is the presence or not and the characteristics of um, air bronchogram sign. This is a typical pathological uh, finding that require the presence of a lung consolidation and that can we use in order to differentiate a large consolidation due to lobar or sublobar pneumonia or in general inflammatory process by an atelectasis in which the aspect of air bronchogram is a typical parallel compared to lung consolidation due to inflammatory process in which the aspect is typically arboriform and usually increase with the breathing up. Especially in pediatric condition, we can also appreciate the fluid bronchograms due to the dimension of course of bronchi in this situation. Moreover, we can appreciate uh, important signs worst signs of lung consolidation in case of micro abscesses in the context of a pulmonary consolidation. Always from a morphological and ultrasonographic point of view, another kind of consolidated state is, of course, of the pleural space. 
In fact, pleural effusion is another pleural pulmonary condition in which we can appreciate the characteristics of the fluid in terms, especially of echogenicity of the fluid and the impact of palang parenchyma and diaphragmatic movement. Uh, before to pass to some other uh, question and answer, we would like to summarize our uh, recent contribution that we can found freely on, uh, um, on the web, in which we can um, report the different contribution of lung ultrasonographic examination in different conditions. So I ask to Antonia if there are some other questions okay. from the colleague. While inviting Danilo Bonsenso to prepare the slides, okay. uh, there is a question from uh, One Nation, I don't remember which one. And the question is, uh, uh, if one pregnant woman is uh, intubated uh, in the high CU or not intubated, uh, how can we do the lung ultrasound examination? So I was writing that uh, we can examine those areas that uh, can be examined. Sure. And then we will ask uh, to rotate a little bit uh, whenever possible yes. in order to assess at least uh, the basal yes. posterior yes. thorax. Sure. Okay. So then we were involved in the communication for uh, speaking. So I couldn't read other questions, but Danilo, if you are ready, we can I go think, on because uh, you prepared some videos. Some so yeah, it please. will be very interactive. And if you don't mind, I will interrupt you okay. because they cannot answer. So I will sure. try to answer and okay. to interrupt you. So I, I guess I can go. Thank you, everyone. It's a very emotional day, really. So proud to be here. Thank you, everyone. So I prepared some clips uh, of Langur Tatan, obviously. And I propose a schematic approach to the interpretation of the images. So uh, all the, the videos are, organi are organized to reply to some basic questions. So I see the pleural line. How is, uh, do I see if the pleural line is moving? Do I recognize the A lines or the vertical artifacts, the consolidations or the effusions that Ricardo and Andrea told us uh, in, in this uh, period. So in this, uh, in this video, I can see, I can recognize the pleural line here. I can see that it moves during the breath, breathing and I see the vertical, the horizontal artifacts, the A lines, and I don't see the vertical artifacts. And this is a, a normal ultrasound pattern. Many of these clips are from COVID patients. So what I see here, so do I recognize the pleural line? Yes, this is the white line here. The, the pleural line is moving, yes, but do I see the horizontal lines? No, I do not see them here, but I can see many vertical artifacts, the B lines that Andre Ricardo told us about. And you know, I think, Danilo, uh, yes. in internet, yes. the video appears a little bit dark. Um, but perhaps you did. Do you recommend to use a so dark video or? Yeah, you know, uh, it's a bit personal, but I lower a, a little bit. Now, usually with this ultrasound machine. Okay, but I, you, you try to keep uh, the gains uh, very low in order to be able to detect uh, these uh, white exactly, vertical these artifacts, artifacts. Because now I was focused to see properly the, the pleural line. Okay. And so pleural line. So I so what what do I see here? Again, some other clips from COVID patients. Again, here I see the pleural line. I can see that it moves. Here I can see in this area the horizontal artifacts here during breathing. But here I see the vertical lines. Okay. okay. And I do not see consolidations and I do not see effusions. And similarly here, let's see what, what I see. Again, the pleural line is clearly visible. It moves 
clearly during the breathing, you can see. And again, here I can see many vertical artifacts during the breathing, mainly, let's wait for them here. The vertical artifacts here and here. Uh, Danilo, yes. may I be critical? Yes, Okay. Sure. Uh, if you show uh, Francesco the videos, can we say that on the right, the depth is not so, we could uh, a little bit zoom again. Exactly, sure. Okay, am I right? Sure. I'm yeah. not a very, very experienced, uh, just to understand if, I, if it's clear for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you very much for those uh, steps. Uh, because it's very useful to start to by answering flare line, sliding, A lines, vertical artifacts, consolidations, okay. and pleural effusions. Thank you. So, again, in these two videos, here I see the pleural lines moving. Let's stop. So, let's go here again. The pleural line is clearly visible. It moves again, and I see several vertical artifacts raising, arising from the pleural line. And I do not see effusions nor clear consolidations. I would have some doubts about uh, consolidations because uh, I can see clearly that the pleural line is a little bit interrupted, uh, irregular, exactly. am I right or not? Exactly, the plural line, maybe on this side, it's a, a little bit irregular, not very clear like in this area. But no consolidation, so, not so clear, I can say exactly. plural line visible, uh, moving, sliding, moving, vertical yes. artifacts. Exactly. No white no. lung. No white lung, exactly. And no consolidations, thank you. So let's see what we see here. We see a parallel line which yes. is moving with this horizontal pattern again. While here, I can see the curtain sign. So during the breathing. Let me see again. And so yes. I can yes. see the liver. Exactly here, I will stop, I don't know why. Don't worry, you can, you can go out the presentation Please and you can me. answer again. Good. Okay, so here is the liver and during the breathing it goes down. So the carpet sign that Andrea told us, and this is the pleural line moving. How with can you get this video? So for instance, there, we, because, we, yes, we put the probe on the area seven and nine that Andrea told us, but also when, when you scan the, the basis of the lines. On so the back, because- when, when you scan the basis of the line, we put here, so a, a bit of the probe is on the lag, and a bit of the probe is on the abdomen. So we can see during breathing, the diaphragm is moving. And so we see this pattern of the carpet sign and that under explain area. You know, I, because I was looking, I was thinking at, at the longitudinal, big and uh, with the longitudinal, we would see the ribs. But exactly. In this way, you are intercostal. Exactly. And we can obtain that one. That is one, exactly, without the ribs inside. Mm -hmm. So here, this is a COVID patient. So we see the pleural line, but uh, here we see that this is different from previous patients. So what do we see here? We I, see, I see irregular pleural exactly. line, then several vertical artifacts, consolidations, subpleural exactly, consolidations, here. and white beyond. Exactly. And again, here, the pleural line. Uh, it is visible, but very, very regular. Exactly, several consolidations. Exactly, and the areas of white line here beyond. It's very dark, the, the video clip, so I have to become comfortable 
because it's not the normal ultrasound scan we do, but I can recognize white beyond those uh, nodules, uh, those exactly, consolidations. Exactly, yeah. And no A line are visible exactly. anymore. So let's go to another one. Uh, how is uh, the video clip uh, in internet? Is it very dark for you? Let me see. Does it understand? Uh, no, no, it's quite good. So, so here, again, we see the pleural line, which is very regular. In some areas, looks kind of broken. Yes. Like here, and some consolidations. One appears here during breathing, and one other here. Okay. So maybe we can visit another similar one. So here the pleural line is not it, visible. It, 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 so it, yes, it's really broken. So we don't see the white line we saw in previous clips. We have this several cons sub pleural consolidation here, here, here. We don't see the A lines. Exactly. That's very useful for me. Oh, this is very different because this one is normal. Not really. Let's see, let's see. No, oh, no, no, no. At the beginning, I saw okay. So <laughs> we recognize here the pleural, the pleural line. line, but some during breathing, some areas appear with the pleural line not yeah. regular anymore. With areas, it's most consolidations here, appears yes, yes. during breathing with this patchy area of a vertical artifacts here. Okay, now it's clear. Okay, let's see some different one later. Okay, let's see here with the linear probe. This is still a COVID patient. So we see the pleural line, which is in this area a bit irregular. Here, irregular. Irregular. Here we recognize the horizontal artifacts. Yes. And let's see this other one. So we see the pleural line with some artifacts here. But Danilo, I want to ask you. Yes. Uh, in a normal patient, no COVID infection, can we see some uh, isolated uh, vertical artifacts? Yes, in, in healthy patients or children, we can see sometimes some uh, isolated vertical artifacts. Because okay. we have to be very careful not to have false positive cases. Uh, if we start uh, scanning patients and we detect uh, some vertical artifact, when uh, do we have to make a suspicion of, uh, of COVID infection? So the clinical- Do, do you have uh, some recommendation? I mean, we have to be careful. In yeah. case of isolated, no yeah, worries. Just very few vertical isolated artifacts. It's not very typical pattern. Okay. Otherwise, in a patient with a, clinic, a suspicious clinical scenario, we usually see multiple of these artifacts in several areas since COVID is characterized by a patchy distribution, which is usually bilateral and in several areas of the line. Okay. Uh, would you like to repeat uh, for those, uh, for our listeners, uh, the continuous line? So isolated, uh, multiple. Multiple. Then the 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 areas of confluent vertical artifacts. Okay. So we can see the white areas and consolidation. Consolidation of and different sizes. Bilateral and patchy. And patchy, exactly. This is the typical. So let's see. This video more it's, it's brighter. So maybe it's easier yeah, to yeah. see. Yeah, yeah. You see the, the pleural line here is visible and it moves during breathing. It's irregular and multiple vertical artifacts arises from 
from the pleural line here, here. Let's see, maybe here we have some different, I mean, it's still COVID, okay. So let's see two different cases now. So here again, we see the, the pleural line, this is a, a COVID patient. The pleural line moves during breathing, it's broken in some area, and here we clearly see some vertical artifacts here or here. So on these two sizes of the clip. Here on the right, we have a totally different pattern. So we almost not recognize the pleural line. So we don't see those that pleural line moving and the vertical artifacts. We see a large consolidation as Ricardo showed us with uh, air bronchograms inside. And here, a few milliliters pleural effusion, reactive pleural effusion. We will see more consolidation here, maybe. Exactly. So here again, the pattern is completely different from previous picture. So we see this black anechoic area, which is a pleural effusion and an area of consolidation. This is a, a patient with pneumonia with air bronchogram inside. Pneumonia not related not to COVID, COVID. Not COVID pneumonia. This is a bacterial pneumonia. So this is not typical at all. Exactly. So here again, here we can recognize a bit of pleural line. And here this black area is, we are on the basis of the lung. We see the pleural effusion and this is a collapsed lung. This so is completely different from the previous pattern. So I see consolidations here, 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 and I see the pleural effusion. Here again, these are children with pneumonia. So what I see here, here begins the, the lung, the, the pleural line, but I don't see anymore the vertical artifacts. I don't see the horizontal lines, but I see the lung here with the air bronchograms inside, which this is the air moving inside the, the, the bronchus. And what's this? And this is two children with pneumonia, bacterial pneumonia. Yeah, we don't see the question. Okay, no, no. There, okay. uh, there is a Sabrina okay. and Andrea. They are looking at your questions, so they can read them if you want. Sure. While you can go on, but you can go I on, and on then they will so. interrupt us. So again, what we see here. Again, a pleural effusion. So I, I also, if you can notice from, from the video, this is the effusion here is not totally black like in the previous one. So let me go one step behind. So here we see a totally black pleural effusion. And this was a child with a complicated pneumonia. So here we see the lung, the collapsed lung. And here, the pleural effusion, we can see some uh, micro spots of uh, gray, small gray particles. And this was a child with a complicated pneumonia and pleural effusion with a, uh, a bacterial effusion when it was drained. Wow. Danilo, sorry, we have, a, we have a question from Ahmed. How can differentiate pneumonia from uh, different etiology compared to COVID-19 because both show consolidation. Exactly, so uh, let, let's go back to some COVID consolidation. So as we said earlier, maybe this one. So in COVID patients, uh, the consolidations that we see are different usually from bacterial consolidations because uh, the distribution is different in COVID pneumonia. As we said earlier, we have usually a diffuse patch distribution, which is bilateral and in multiple areas of the lung. And on the morphological point of view, there are usually small uh, overall consolidations which are uh, sub, sub consolidations and usually are not big 
with extensive air broker grants. So here, this is, these are small consolidations during COVID pneumonia. Uh, and this other one is still, a, let me go to the another adult patient. A preg this was a pregnant lady, pregnant woman. We see the consolidation here is completely different. So it's this big, is not this COVID. is bacterial, exactly. This is a bacterial pneumonia. We see the big consolidations with these multiple air brocograms, which are very unusual in the COVID pneumonia. I don't know, I don't know if you agree, Ricardo and Andrea. Maybe. Is, you have to come closer to the microphone. Yes, Danilo, I can add only that, of course, as from for any kind of pneumonia, the diagnosis is always based on microbiological tool, of course. Um, another as important aspect that we can always remember that, that uh, the definition of specific, uh, more or less specific pattern is uh, mostly influenced by the timing of the clinical presentation. That is the timing from the onset of symptoms to the first evaluation of the patient. We believe that uh, these uh, uh, crucially influence the pattern that we can observe with our ultrasonographic assessment. As uh, uh, described in detail by Danilo, the pattern, the specific pattern is of course the bil characterized by bilaterality and uh, small consolidation. But we can also, especially in late phases of COVID-19, all in particular, if it is complicated by other uh, bacterial uh, infection, general infection, we can also find consolidated uh, um, lung parenchyma. Thank you, Ricardo. Now okay. again, uh, the video clips. I think we are almost there. So again, here, a pleural effusion. So the pattern, again, is completely different. We don't recognize the white pleural line. We don't recognize the horizontal artifacts, but we see this pleural effusion and the consolidated lung here. Danilo, sorry, another yes. question from Dell. If uh, you can also comment on the thickness of the pleural line in the evaluation of COVID-19 cases. Okay, as we said in the first cases, we have uh, irregular pleural lines. Someone say it talks about irregular pleural lines, someone talks about thickened pleural line. So uh, definitely we have uh, uh, the pleural line can be regular with sometimes more gra granular appearance, can look a little bit thicker in some areas. Maybe here you can see some areas that are different from this line, which is very regular here. While in this area is irregular with granularities, a little bit thickened. But in my experience, I don't know you, uh, I, I don't measure. Uh, so I don't think it's uh, a, a non routine practice to measure it. I don't know if you have a different experience. We perfectly agree with you. Um, you have highlighted the contribution derived from a linear probe in order to characterize the, the aspect of the plural line. So we think that uh, the answer for the colleague is, uh, is complete. Okay. Danilo uh, and Ricardo, Ricardo, I wanted to ask you, what do you suggest uh, to our colleagues uh, who are beginners of lung ultrasound as I was? Uh, do you suggest uh, to scan normal patients? How many patients do you think it's uh, necessary before becoming confident a little bit about uh, the examination? Because uh, we can say something now that if you want, in the next week, if you have the possibility, you could try to scan your colleagues, uh, your friend, your patient, one patient, and to, keep, to remember those are tricks. But how many patients do you suggest before reaching a little bit of experience? Ricardo, I think that it is very, very uh, difficult or impossible to answer to this question. 
uh, even if I like to highlight the concept of extension of medical examination. <laughs> so um, um, I believe that uh, uh, that is the um, the working process in order to acquire more confidence in a lung ultrasonography always pass through the evaluation of many, many, many uh, subjects, in particular in different uh, settings, in uh, outpatient condition, in uh, ICU, if it's possible, in children, if you have the possibility to cooperate with, uh, with colleague, with pediatric colleague. Um, it's crucial to uh, focus it on the setting of the machine. It's very, very important um, uh, spend time in order to um, obtain information from that specific machine that the single operator has in order to optimize the quality of the, of the image. And it is crucial if it is possible to, um, uh, to have a feedback from another yes. colleague through the platform that we have now, that uh, this is a very easy way in order to cooperate. Okay, with but you. may we invite our colleagues uh, to send us through the moderators, yes. at least uh, if, they, if you want, of course, uh, at least uh, one examination, one, two clips. Then next week, uh, we will explain you how you can join the platform. But perhaps at the beginning, during the week, they can collect uh, some video clips. Uh, and if you can use uh, WhatsApp or some, something else, they can try to send us. This is a very, very um, interesting idea of uh, Antonia because uh, it uh, gives us the, the opportunity to really uh, check the quality of music in real time with the, okay. with the colleagues. Okay, thank you so much. Do you have uh, no, additional I, cases? We finished. Okay, we can uh, Please. We, no, we fi I finished with the. Uh, okay, video, so there is a, can... I want the three of you mm -hmm. here, if it's possible with uh, quite yeah. a distance. <laughs> uh, okay, and there is a very, very important clinical question about uh, um, sensitivity specificity of COVID-19 uh, patients. We are not talking about COVID-19 pneumonia, COVID-19 patients. In your experience so far, can we use uh, lung ultrasound to predict uh, the outcome of one COVID-19 infected patient? First question. Second, uh, did you have many false positive, positive cases? Do you think that the detection of some vertical artifacts can anticipate the onset of symptoms? One, two, three. <laughs> Your, your answer. answer. So uh, the question is very, very important. You have okay. to look at the camera. Yeah, the question is very, very important. So when we are talking about uh, COVID-19, uh, we have to uh, focus on the, uh, the possibility that the COVID-19 is not uh, always a pneumonia. Okay, COVID-19 can be can have different symptomatologies, different uh, clinical aspects, uh, ranging from asymptomatic cases to uh, flu-like uh, cases and severe pneumonia. So, uh, some in some cases, COVID-19 does not match always with pneumonia. So sometimes a, a COVID-19 patient uh, can not have uh, signs ultrasonographic, CT scan, chest X-ray, signs of a pneumonia. Okay, um, on the possibility that uh, chest ultrasonography uh, of, uh, anticipate yes. The, uh, the, to the predict worsening. the worsening and the evolution of the pneumonia, we can refer to a, a study that uh, has been published some years ago uh, about the induction 
of uh, a acute respiratory distress syndrome in animal models with the injection uh, the vein, through veins of uh, oleic acid. In these case, cases, the ultrasound evaluation was able to anticipate uh, with the pathological findings to anticipate uh, the alteration of gas exchanges. So it was very important for us this work because we can, uh, we can say that sometimes uh, asymptomatic or, or uh, slight symptomatology, respiratory symptomatology, uh, and I think about uh, uh, slight dyspnea, uh, cough, uh, okay, um, with some signs on uh, uh, ultrasonographic pattern subjective of uh, pneumonia, okay, uh, are uh, indicative of something that is going to get worse. Okay, it is very important. In these cases, chest X-ray can be totally negative. And uh, to have a chest ultrasonographic pattern suggestive of pneumonia in mm, slight symptomatologies, is very indicative to check for pneumonia with the CT scan and to, uh, to uh, keep under observation this patient because it is going to get worse. Okay, so I understood that to make a diagnosis of pneumonia in a symptomatic patient, good, fine. You know, in our hospital, we had so many COVID-19 patients and uh, the two pneumologists, uh, they took care of so many cases. Uh, so even if uh, we don't have, uh, we still do not have a uh, prospective data collected uh, and analyzed, they have uh, such a great personal experience. The same for Danilo, for children, you know that it's not so common in children and now also for pregnant women. So to make diagnosis uh, and to assess uh, the severity of the disease, you could say yes yes, 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 yes. Okay, do you think uh, that uh, in uh, at the early stage of infection, you could uh, discriminate those uh, who are going to worsen suddenly or very soon, yeah. and those who could have a very slow and pouchy symptomatic disease? Do you agree on that? Yeah, yeah. In, do you think? Uh, in this case, uh, maybe can optimize the timing for chest CT scan. In particular, with the uh, iodine minimum contrast in case of worsening of pulmonary gas exchange. Yeah, okay, thank you so much. Now, because we have only 20 minutes left, it's time to go back to the test. So if our attendees, still around 30 attendees, if they want to test themselves, if they understood the theoretical basis of a lung ultrasound, they, how can they do? Are they receiving a, a format? One, 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 one. Okay, so. At the end, they, they have to pass Okay, so after the one video clip, uh, Andrea is going to show you one video clip. Then you will see the sheet form. You will click, uh, you, you will choose your answer and you have to say submit. No, no, no. Uh, no. One, one, by one. one by one. At the end of the ceremony. Okay, and uh, when do we want uh, to make comments on which video? One by one or at the end? One by one, one by I would one. say. One, one by one. So we are going to look at the video. Yeah, we, we will uh, take uh, okay. 10 seconds okay. in order to make your choice yeah. from one to six. Then you oh, can, you will give us the right answer yeah. and comments. Please. Let's start. Okay, let's start again with this uh, game. Okay. 
the test is the same uh, of the previously one, so we can uh, choose the correct answer uh, after um, having uh, um, acquired some skills in this event. So, first video. <laughs> the answers are normal, vertical artifact with the slight pleural irregularities or pleural line broken and indented with small subpleural consolidation, white lung without subpleural consolidation, white lung with subpleural consolidation, large pulmonary consolidation, or pleural effusion. So, who wants to make your choice? So, 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Two seconds. It's, it's <laughs> no. <laughs> we have to think about that. Okay. Ready? Ready for the, the correct answer? The correct answer is the number two. Sonographic interstitial syndrome, vertical artifacts with some pleural alteration, like pleural line indented, and with uh, small subpleural consolidations, but some uh, uh, horizontal, uh, horizontal reverberating artifacts are uh, still visible. Okay. May I um, make another comment? In this video, I can see some a lines. Yeah. Uh, Horizontal right. reverberating artifacts. Some reverberating. And, uh, but no white lung. No white lung. Because no uh, the vertical artifacts are separated. Artifact. Multiple yeah. but separated. The right. white lung is uh, characterized by the, a complete white field or uh, a partial very close to a patch. Lung and the absence of horizontal Okay, shall we move to the second second question? Okay. Second video. So just the correct answer. Normal, vertical artifact with flat flare regularities. White lung without subpleural consolidation. White lung with subpleural consolidation, large pulmonary consolidation, pleural effusion. Make your choice. Okay. We should Are you have ready? a ring bell. Wait. Oh. Wait a second. Okay. <laughs> Done. <laughs> okay. This is the case of a white lung without subpleural consolidation. And you can see white pulmonary fields and the spirit area. Every time it is possible to see a spirit area. Okay, like in this case, but white lung is the predominant pattern. And we have to focus and pay attention to the white lung pattern. So white lung without subpleural consolidation. In this case, the correct answer was the three, the number three. Okay, let's move to the third video. Okay, so make your choice. Normal, vertical artifact with high pleural irregularities, white lung without subpleural consolidation, white lung with subpleural consolidation, large pulmonary consolidation, pleural effusion. Done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Time is over. Okay, in this case, uh, you can uh, you can see a large pulmonary consolidation. Okay, large pulmonary consolidation that involves uh, almost any 
see a, a wall lobe uh, of a lung, and you can uh, have the morphology of the lung. This is a consolidated pattern, and you, you can see some uh, fluid bronchograms, like in this case, okay, fluid bronchograms, fluid bronchograms, and uh, uh, perhaps uh, abscesses in the lung. This is a case of morphologic uh, uh, examination, uh, ultrasound examination, and the, the lung is uh, very similar uh, to the uh, to a liver or a kidney or parenchymatous uh, organ. Okay, good. Okay, let's <coughs> move to the fourth video. You can vote in your choice. Normal vertical lattice part with light flare irregularities of pleural line indented, white lung without subpleural consolidation, white lung with a pleural consolidation, large pulmonary consolidation, pleural effusion. What do you think about? Antonia is going to count down. Done. Done. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the case of a normal pattern, okay, in which you can see a, the pleural line with a, a horizontal reverberating artifacts and mirroring phenomena. And you can see the mirror effect in, uh, behind the pleural line uh, from the tissues of the chest wall. So this is the case of a normal peripheral, peripheral disposition of a phasis, and this is a normal periphery pattern of lungs. Let's move to the next. Okay, again, you have to choose between a normal vertical artifact uh, with the pleural alteration, Parvi. White lung without subpleural consolidation, white lung with subpleural consolidation, large pulmonary consolidation, and pleural infusion. Done. Okay, this is the case of a white lung, obviously a white lung, a white lung without subpleural consolidation. This is the case of number three, but the correct answer is the number three. And you can see the, the white lung without, without any horizontal reverberation, any horizontal phenomena, white, completely white lung field, and plural line irregular and thickened. I have some questions. Okay. Because uh, I had some doubts here at the beginning because I was focused on the vertical artifacts on the left. So just not to make the same mistake the I did here. We can see some vertical artifacts uh, it is there. Very, it is very deep. On the right is absolutely white land for us. But then I have some doubts about this area of consolidation. Are yeah. there consolidations or not? There are uh, little consolidation perhaps, but it is an irregularity of the pleural line. The, this aspect can fit with a small, small consolidation, uh, but the, it is difficult to distinguish in this irregular course and cobbled pleural line uh, clear consolidations. Okay, this is the case of a, a white land we, uh, in which you uh, vertical artifacts are completely merged and a, a pulmonary field, white pulmonary field, is, uh, is uh, uh, surely present. Okay, thank you. 
Next one. Next one. Okay. Again, normal. Vertical artifact with the clever irregularities, clever line broken or indented with the small subpleural consolidation, white lung without subpleural consolidation, white lung with subpleural consolidation, large pulmonary consolidation, pleural occlusion. Our residents are now trying to make the correct choice. One, two, Three, four, done. Okay. In this case, the correct answer is the number two. You can see vertical artifact, the pleural line is indented and broken, and you can have a small subpleural consolidation. And uh, 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 this is uh, the case uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, the correct answer is the two. This is a case of a score show of our scoring, uh, our scoring the system. Uh, horizontal reverberating artifacts are uh, still present and uh, distinguishable. Okay, so it is not a white lung pattern, but it is a score show. Next one. Next one. Okay, a convex probe examination. So normal vertical artifact with the right pleural irregularity, white lung without subpleural consolidation, white lung with subpleural consolidation, large pulmonary consolidation, pleural occlusion. This is a little bit tricky. Can we have a Again, as a video, and uh, we can repeat the questions uh, made by Danilo. Yes. Is the pleural line visible? Yes. Is it uh, sliding? Yes. Yes. Uh, are there no a line horizontal uh, lines are visible? Yes. 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 Are there vertical artifacts? No. Isolate one, not really. No. no, for them, not at all. For me, I would be a little bit uncertain about <laughs> that vertical, but no, for them, there are no, no vertical artifacts at all. <laughs> so, no pleural effusion, no consolidation. So, it's normal. It's normal. Therefore, it's normal. Yeah. Okay, but we could be very critical because Why? Why? the zoom should be a little bit larger. Yeah. Why, why, <laughs> why uh, it is tricky on a, a vertical artifact? It, it is, this is not a vertical artifact because this uh, image does not move with the sliding sign. These are a sequence of horizontal artifacts in the area in which the ultrasound beam has the much power. Okay, so mm -hmm. you, you have highlighted the horizontal reverberating artifact, but it, this is not a vertical artifact, definitely not vertical artifact. Wow, so pay attention because we cannot make the mistake. Thank you so much. And then are we going to the last video? Not the last. Only yes. two last. Yeah. Okay. This is a, a tricky video, okay? Pay attention to what are, are you seeing. Normal, vertical antifat with right level regularities, white lung without subpleural consolidation, white lung with subpleural consolidation, large pulmonary consolidation, pleural Two, three, four, Five, done. Okay. This is the case of a white lung without subpleural consolidation because you have to focus your attention on this part of the video. Okay. This is a clear white lung with pleural irregularities in a patchy 
scan in which you can see also a quite normal thermal, normal pattern, but uh, your attention has to be paid to, uh, on uh, this white lung zone. So the white lung is predominant, is the predominant and the worst pattern of this ultrasonographic scan. Okay. Let's move to this. Okay. Again, now the vertical artifacts with slight irregularity, white lung without subpleural consolidation, white lung with subpleural consolidation, large pulmonary consolidation, pleural effusion. Okay, done. Okay, this is definitely the case of a white lung with subpleural consolidation. You, uh, so the correct answer was the fourth. White lung with subpleural consolidation, clear subpleural consolidation. It is different from the case uh, shown before, and that was uh, tricky for Antonia. In this case, you can recognize clearly the, the consolidation. Okay. okay. White lung with subpleural consolidation. Now it's clear. The last one, and the easiest. <laughs> this is uh, the easiest? Yes. <laughs> because uh, we can recognize fluid. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, done. Okay. The this correct is answer is? Pleural effusion. Pleural without effusion. any doubt. Is it a typical of COVID? No. No, not it is not, typical. A COVID, no, 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 not a COVID pneumonia typical uh, pattern. Okay. Yeah. Now, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Andrea, if you want now, you can do submit in order to and uh, send us your result if you want, if you wish. And uh, now it's time to conclude our workshop. I would like to give the voice uh, to a doctor in Ethiopia. Is it possible, Dr. Kibrom? Kibrom. We okay. would like to say hello to Dr. Kibrom from Ethiopia. Can you hear me? If you Hello? want for the other colleagues, uh, please uh, do submit your Hello? answers. Is uh, Dr. Kibro there? Yes. Oh, hi. Hello? Can you, can if you, hear you can me? speak a little bit loudly. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, so. This is Dr. Kivram from northern part of uh, Ethiopia. Yeah. Uh, from Makale. I, I missed the first part of your presentation. Uh, but uh, it was excellent. Really, uh, your ultrasound pictures were very clear. Your demonstrations were very nice, really. Uh, I have done some ultrasounds with the curvilinear probe. I think you are doing it now with a linear probe. Uh, you, 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 your uh, pictures are really nice. So thank you for the presentations. I hope uh, uh, I will get your uh, uh, presentations now, if it's, if it's possible, if you have recorded it, because I missed the uh, your first presentations. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for your comments. And uh, we made recording of the, of the workshop, so it will be available. So no worries. But then uh, next week, uh, we will uh, tell you exactly where you can find a quite uh, extensive lecture made by Dr. In Kingolo and Smarjazzi. So now oh. I don't want to forget that uh, um, if you wanted to receive a 
document of attendance, uh, you will receive it actually. It will be sent by the office of a CESI in Milan to your email address. So you will receive two Thank documents you. of attendance for today. And if you will be attending also for next week. Now, before concluding, we would like to say that if you have the possibility to test the ultrasound on the thorax to examine the lung during the week, we could be able to share experiences next week. So next appointment will be Thursday, 14 of May, right? Right. from 2 p.m. Right. to 6 p.m. again. We will uh, show you additional cases. Uh, we will be listening for your experiences. Uh, and if you want, you can send answers, comments, questions uh, via WhatsApp. So I want to thank Andrea, thank Ricardo, you, Andrea. Thank you. Danilo, Francesca, the task force. I want to really thank you Francesco for the technical aspect, Sabrina for the organization of the event, and all the doctors behind the camera who attended the course with us, who brought enthusiasm, passion, and they wanted to be in contact with you, but we want to be in contact with you if it will be possible. So take care. We do hope that in Africa, the heartbreak would be very, very small, not so, because it's a very, very difficult situation. We face it, we are, we, I hope that we are overcoming it. So take care, be safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, 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 Thank you so much. Puoi mettere l'ultima slide, ma usiamo come slide di chiusura. Hai tolto il volume? Ta 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 ta. Grazie a tutti.